in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Psalm 1 and verse 3, popular but powerful scripture. Psalms chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper he shall be he's trying to paint the picture of a kind of man that god is describing and he's saying that man will be in the similitude of a tree that is planted by the rivers of water you know sometimes when you study the bible try to understand what god is saying he didn't say by that is planted by the rivers he said the rivers of water then he says that he brings forth his fruit in season and his leaf does not wither and so whatever he does prospers one more scripture john chapter 15 and verse 8 just give us king james if we can have amplified that would be fine john 15 and verse 8 now this scripture is very powerful the bible says when you bear or produce much fruit my father is honored and glorified so there's no point being confused as to how god is glorified it says when you bear much fruit my father is honored and glorified and you show and prove yourselves to be true followers so fruitfulness is a demonstration is a validation that you were truly mentored by god is proof that you are part of him are we together now king james says hearing is my father glorified hearing this is how the father is glorified when you bear much fruit and he says by so doing so shall ye be my disciples Blessed be the name of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Paul was teaching on the principle of sowing and reaping. And then he said something. He says, and God is able to make how many? That means grace is in dimensions. The Bible didn't say God is able to make grace. All grace. There are different kinds of graces and i've defined for you what grace is grace is not just limited to you know unmerited access and all of that grace like love has dimensions i define grace as every good and perfect gift that comes from above every possibility given to the saints that is only routed in christ is called grace so anointing is grace are we together now victory is grace wisdom is grace grace is like the spiritual warehouse that hosts every tool every arsenal that has been stored for the victory of the saints and the bible says there are different kinds of graces wisdom is a grace the anointing is a grace intuition is a grace creativity is a grace and the bible says on account of god's desire to make you fruitful he can coordinate all grace that means that god looks at your life 
and finds out the dimensions of his grace that must be captured in your life for the result he said you produce to be produced and that in his wisdom he is able to make all grace abound the word abound here means to make it within your reach god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that you always having sufficiency the word sufficiency here is not just abundance of resources alone that means that you are not limited in anything as far as your assignment or your productivity is concerned and then it says that you having sufficiency in all things may abound the goal is to produce good works but the bible says the system is that god will have to assist you so fruitfulness is not something that is just a product of your initiative you have to be assisted by god and the bible says one of the ways that god assists us is that by his intelligence he scans through your life and finds out what dimensions the graces that are not yet there and god is able to make all grace favor is grace he can make that grace abound towards you intelligence is grace divine direction is grace and god is able to make all grace to make all grace to make all grace like instruct them favor go and meet pastor alpha god is able to make he knows that if that dimension of grace is not in your life it will make him look like a liar so he puts pressure on his own integrity and commands that dimension of grace to find a way of colliding with you jesus and god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency he says in all things may abound to every good work i believe this for my life all grace so it's no surprise if someone cannot sleep because of me and wakes up in the morning and says i don't know why i was thinking about you i know what is happening in the spirit god is making all grace he's coordinating the tools the possibilities that must be featured in my life all grace if he means him to silence a wicked man somewhere in the village he can make all grace that is grace too judgment is grace because it has the ability to make the word of god come to pass in your life god is able to make all grace so he looks at you as a man of god and knows that there are certain testimonies you need in your ministry for certain people to call your attention so he makes all grace he will direct that grace he knows that for as long as you recycle a particular dimension of testimonies, you will not call on the attention of kings. So he will supply that grace. All grace. He can delay your destiny helper because you were delayed. He will punish another man to make sure you must meet in time. All grace. That is called mercy. All grace. You were supposed to run fast, but you slowed down. Then God makes another man to slow down, to wait for you because you have to meet all grace. Believe what I'm telling you now. My brothers and my sisters, whoever receives this privilege from God is a sign and a wonder. You will look at such lives and marvel. God is able to make all grace. God gave me a revelation of this scripture in my time of retreat and I didn't know what to do with myself again. To make all grace. All grace. I sit down and I discern that you are thirsty. And whoever has water within your vicinity is in trouble because one man is thirsty. I make sure all water find the way, whether it's from a well, whether it's from rain, whether it's from a factory producing water i know you need water so i will coordinate grace is a force it can make things come to you if god knows you need the ministry of men he will make all grace all grace they will come to you and wonder why they are there you will know they didn't bring themselves all grace 
if God sees that the level you are stepping into there is a dimension of consistent prayer contact that you must make to allow your spirit build capacity in a strange way without your requesting it a kind of fire will land on you it's not something that you will try to do it will so quicken you you will wake up and pray non-stop like a madman he's making all grace because what he's about to give you he vets your capacity and sees that you are you are not yet built to hold it so he makes all grace and you find out that all through february all his dealings with you is around prayer and fasting and you say god what are you doing it is still all grace because you who cannot fast two days without tasting something you are now going three days dry complete dry i don't mean breaking in the night it's not your human making he's making all grace and by the third day he comes to you and said this is why i put the fast there is a new oil there is a new wine i was shedding off the old wine skin so you can carry something that cannot be disproved we give you god the highest praise from the rising of the sun Mm. We give you say the highest praise from the rising of the sun to the one more time. We give you God the highest praise. you had you had the testimony of the gentleman here that an angel can stand up and give you a number all grace he found out that every man he instructed to honor you disobeyed and he said no not even men will stop me if they will not praise me i can raise stones 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 let me tell you it's a fearful thing when god becomes desperate over a man it's a fearful thing to see that the jealousy of god becomes directed towards a man clear the way for that man because there is nothing you can do in time that can interrupt what listen listen i want you to get this i'm showing you the implications of receiving a prophetic word the holy ghost is not looking for a man the holy ghost is following where the word is so if you receive the word you attract his attention and once he comes that place where the word has been received becomes the center of his activity until the word achieves what it came to do all grace all grace all grace all grace all grace no matter how he would do it he, if it means him overturning all grace must reach you there's something in biology called trophic movements remember we were taught something like that there's geotrophism there's phototrophism it's a system by which plants insist until they grow so if you bend a plant in a way and it needs sunlight it will find a way to squeeze itself until it receives that light if you close it how many of you have seen trees break fence by the root because they need to spread they were not designed to be confined and whoever made a mistake and put a fence on it it will keep quiet like it will shift it until you see the fence cracking how forcible are right words they will push every barrier until the word of god prevails so if god has told you man of god this is your season of appearing i tell you forget about whoever likes you or doesn't like you is a joke when his hand rests upon you he will station all your destiny helpers in a meeting where he will so lavishly anoint you when your enemies testify of god upon your life you have won you have won because the testimony of your enemies is more believable than that of your friends their enmity validates the truthfulness of what they are saying i don't like this pastor but my god i saw it by myself this is the hand of god look 
look at the scripture again and then we'll deal with a few things and God is able God is able if God were not able then I'll be afraid because how will the grace come It's one thing to tell me a possibility but the Bible says God is able let me tell you what it means to be able to be able means to be capable to be able means it is within your jurisdiction ah, within your jurisdiction if I have 10 naira and I see a little search of pure water I am able to buy it the resource to make it happen is there is that true if I have a company for instance and I see a young man who is a graduate and trusting God for a job I am able able means it is within your ability so let's go now he says it is within God's ability to make all grace it is within God's ability to bring the anointing it is within God's ability to open you up to a strange dimension of visions and dreams it is within God's ability to manipulate the loyalty of men towards you God is able to make all grace not grace all grace abound towards you that means that the next time you see strange things happening you will not act ignorant again the next time you find out that you wanted to go in the morning and a visitor delayed you and now that you are coming out you meet someone you've been trying to meet you have an interpretation to that coincidence all grace walking by the spirit of wisdom hmm. God has decided to channel his jealousy towards us this year like never before and then declaring that we be fruitful it will be wicked he says it says when I send thee lackest thou anything in other words I cannot send you without equipping you God does not equip you by giving you money he doesn't equip you just by giving no 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 he equips you by giving you something supernatural that will begin to manipulate men to your own wonder why are you helping me and the person says honestly if I had the answer and then you know there is a reason why do you want to buy chairs for my church don't you have a pastor to say I, 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 I can't explain why and you know all grace all grace being channeled towards you please sit down so by the spirit of the living God and by the illumination of God's word we know that he's bringing us into a season of extreme productivity He's bringing us to a season of influence. He's bringing us to a season of increase. He's bringing us to a season of unusual results. What does it mean to have extraordinary fruitfulness? It means to establish territorial dominion through unusual consistent and ever increasing results to establish territorial dominion through unusual consistent ever increasing results what does it mean to be fruitful to be fruitful means to expand to break borders to venture into virgin horizons dimensions never thought possible give us Colossians chapter 1 please and then verse 9 and 10 Colossians 1 9 and 10 very powerful scripture it says for this cause we also since the day we heard of it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding 10 that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God being fruitful in every good work fruitfulness is a time of 
a mighty manifestation of supernatural results in every area every area mighty manifestation of supernatural results fruitfulness also entails a time of restoration a time of restoration until the spirit be poured upon us from on high he says 32 and verse 15 isaiah then he says that the desert land be counted for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine for a forest until the spirit be poured upon us from on high it's a time of restoration extraordinary fruitfulness entails a time of great favor great favor one of the evident graces that should be at work in the saints when god declares fruitfulness let's look at the keys very quickly for every door we desire open in the spirit there are keys i'm going to give us two keys tonight very quickly that will control are experiencing extraordinary fruitfulness number one the first key is embracing the ministry of the word please write it down embracing the ministry of the word my brothers and my sisters we are living in times where your neglecting the word will be to your own peril it's not only a prerequisite for your spiritual advancement but it will translate to your success in general the bible likens the word to water are we together now and biology teaches us i hope i'm right forgive me if i'm not but i think i am that the human body contains over 70 percent of water that is the condition among other things for a man to be said to be healthy and alive so if a body lives because of the abundance of the water in it and that even our own earth as an ecosystem survives because of the abundance of water two thirds of the world being covered with water then imagine a life without water that's exactly what happens to a spirit without the word I know a little bit about what the absence of water can do in a human body it can cause shock and can even kill the person so when there is no that water of the word is not at work in you there is a deficiency a system was designed in man to detect thirst and I think they tell us, medical people tell us that by the time you really feel thirsty, your body has already been frustrated demanding water. Is that true? That you shouldn't have to wait until the body gets that thirsty. The ministry of the word. And you know, many times when we say the word of God, many believers just oh yeah yeah you mean scriptures no 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 the word of god is not just a vague compendium of letters for us to cram and quote and recite like a charm for victory no no we must understand what the word of god is i told you that the word of god is a compendium of god's methodology the word of god is a compendium of his system of operation so by the time the Bible says that the word of God dwells in you richly, it means that you come into a full comprehension of God's ways of doing things, that you'll be enlightened, illumination by the Spirit granted unto you, that you will know, know, not awareness, fellowship with the mystery. The ministry of the word. Nobody in the kingdom ever bears fruit ignoring the word he will only bear fruit in season when he is planted by the rivers of water the rivers of the word you will yield your fruit in season and then your leaves will not wither he said meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them and then he says your profiting will appear unto all 
is God blessing us now please write this down there are three dimensions of the Word of God that we must embrace that is tied to fruitfulness number one according to Colossians chapter 1 please leave it there and verse 9 the first dimension of the Word of God that we need is the knowledge of his will the knowledge of his will the knowledge of his will number two the word of God as wisdom number three the word of God manifesting as spiritual understanding so the Bible tells us that I desire that you be filled with these tripartite dimensions one the knowledge of his will that you understand the system of operation of God that you are able to discern his will through it Hebrews chapter 1 says God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us by the fathers and through the prophets verse 2 says had in this last day spoken to us through his son the word which he has appointed to be heir of all things that his most valid instrument for discerning his will is his word it's important you cannot lay claims on the truth of God's word when you are in doubt if it is the will of God that means that you need to search the scripture to find out is it the will of God to prosper me is it the will of God to lift me is it the will of God to heal me is it the will of God for my ministry to flourish is it the will of God to cause me to become a voice over a territory when you know the mystery of his will then you can engage your faith and receive it and then number two wisdom we need the wisdom of God the Bible says every house is built through wisdom and by understanding it is established a house is not built through desire desire only gives you the fortitude to create an atmosphere for the spirit of wisdom to come it says through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom the desire brings about separation but it will take the word to administer wisdom listen the word of god is the wisest perspective of god concerning any issue the word of god presents the wisest perspective on all matters because there are times that you are in a straight between your intelligence and the word of god there are times you are in a straight between culture and the word there are times you are in a straight between your instincts and the word at that time you will have the confidence to lean on the word of god as touching or as as providing the wisest perspective no man ever fails following the word listen every time you are in doubt of the voice of god let the word of god be his voice because even if an angel comes to preach another gospel that defies the integrity of the word then let him be accursed the ministry of the word many believers refuse the word we want results but the fortitude to be patient to stay to build to know it takes a lot of sacrifice there is a spiritual labor to receive the word that is the labor that the Bible enjoins that we have to enter our rest. Acts chapter 20, please, quickly, and verse 32. Acts chapter 20 and 32. It says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and then to the word of his grace, the word that is able to cause all graces to come towards you. It says which is able to build you up uh-huh and then give you an inheritance notice the operation of the word you are commended to the word and that the word operates first by building you up the word does not just give you an inheritance the word vets your capacity to receive that inheritance and if you fall short of it it first will build you up then deliver to you an inheritance among them that are sanctified so you can know them that are sanctified by the inheritance they possess and demonstrate and that the word of god is able to build you are we together now the word is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance i think it's galatians 4 that says for an heir 
as long as he's a child he says he differed not from a slave though he be lord of all so he is destined to walk in his inheritance but the bible says provided he is a child void of understanding he differed not the results does not show any difference between the child and the slave but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed so the word of god can wean us away from spiritual childishness and bring us into a point of maturity and then as a reward deliver to us our inheritance everybody say the word of god so you can see a weak person come mike a weak person and standing as weak as he is and he's foolish enough to embrace the word of god are we together now the knowledge of his will the wisdom of god spiritual understanding the bible says these forces begin to walk in him and suddenly it begins to build him up it builds him by transforming his mind recalibrating his understanding giving him god's perspective so he is now put in a position where he is able to rise above culture rise above the sociological context of men his viewpoint becomes the word of god and then the bible says to prove to you that he stayed in the school of the spirit he is given an inheritance among the sanctified his ranking and he's given an opportunity to transit states and you see him and know that i used to know this guy but now what has happened he has been built and given something i think it was day before yesterday or yesterday i usually follow the news on channels they are online platform and i saw the president decorating i think the new inspector general of police and then i said this is it this is my message here for whatever reason you have been built then you are given something and with that comes new responsibilities privileges etc are we together now now what that man could not do whoever he is now he's able to do because he has been given something that's what the word of god does it takes you the way you are and begins to build you and the system of the word is that it builds from inside out this is where the carnal man cannot discern the things of the spirit because most people listen carefully most people seek to look at outward results very quickly and sometimes we try to manipulate the word by making results for ourselves in the out no it doesn't work that way there is a walking of the spirit within you and my brothers and my sisters when god perfects his work within you the evidence must show it will show in every area it will show in your ministry and all of that let me tell you something about spiritual realities if you have it you have it if it's not there once you are doubting is it really there it means it's not there or it's still on its way reaching you if it gets there then it will show it's true are we together now the word is able to build you that means one of the ways the devil is going to try to destroy you is to create whatever formula he can create to alienate you from contact with the word and you will be surprised that one of the ways the devil can distract you is even to give you a bible you will think just because you are holding a bible he gives you a word he can wrap you up in religion so that you are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth you will continue to flatter yourself that just because your eyes continue to make contact with a a book produced by zondervan or white taker house you will mean that you are growing in the word he says ever learning he saw the scribes and said ye search the scriptures for in them you think you will find life and you will not come to me there are all kinds of ways the devil can distract us especially for we preachers because boy ministry can make you so busy and you will be searching the word but you are just looking for a sermon and you can array nice sermons and get all kinds of sermons you are instant as far as ministry is concerned but as a person the richness of the word is not in you and remember our spiritual fortification in this kingdom is the formidability of the word of god that you have meaning that if the word of god is not rich in and around you your life is at a risk when life pushes you it will have to take the word content in you to find expression 
are we together now when the word is not at work in you you are going to be frustrated and discouraged because my brothers and my sisters like pastor alpha was sharing we are at times where men are not just saying based on the world system there is a casting down um someone sent me a text about a funny way somebody stole a phone and i said he would have just begged they would have given him i mean why did you have to that's 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 what hunger does hunger can make women eat their children talk more of a phone when satan wants people to forget about god he manipulates their belly he manipulates the economy he heats up everything to make sure people forget about god are we together now but in the name of jesus it will be minus you some of you what god will do you even be afraid to testify because of the kind of anger around the people who are not in the mood to hear anything god has done so you have to just leave and come and dance in the house of God because you will feel unfair because of the kind of testimony you have even you will feel sad for them not because you are being sarcastic you are wondering Lord this is and he says you believed me and so you committed me but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able persuaded that he is able john chapter 15 and verse 16 i was preparing this and the lord gave me a powerful revelation he said the word ordains you to be fruitful the word ordains you like you conduct an ordination service and you pour oil on a man and say from today brother abc you have become pastor this or whatever you are are we together now the bible says the word can coordinate a an ordination ceremony an ordination is a system of authorization and that the word like a minister can ordain you into a realm it says ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you the word speaking and ordained you to go and bring fruit a beautiful sister here stood as tiny as she was i was just smiling at her our dear one who stood here that wonderful lady and she stood with her cabin crew license that's an ordination are we together yes if you try to harass her around an airport even if she's not employed yet she's able to tell you no 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 i'm a license this and that that means i have received the authorization because these gates are still there remember our old gates and so there is a license and he says i have ordained you i didn't just send you i ordained you ordained by the word where is your pass into the realm of increase and you bring the word god said i will make you exceedingly fruitful and the gate opens there you go and for someone he comes where where is your pass and he says i'm tired and the gate said turn around weariness is not a key for open doors it takes the word where is your path for a new level of the anointing and then you say i will make you exceedingly fruitful that nations shall come out of you and kings out of your loins the word ordains it is true the word ordains let me indoctrinate you with this revelation get it ordained to bear fruit kabarako satire that means whatever you are involved in looks at you you come with a license ordained to bear fruit i'm a music minister ordained to bear fruit in the name of jesus that means there is a life-giving factor in your songs that must force them to reach the nations an ordination happened through the word ordained to bear fruit not ordained to talk stories not ordained to explain ordained to produce results men of god hear this the word of god is able to ordain you that you go and bring fruit not just go and get fruit to go and bring forth like a woman pregnant and then she brings forth something out of her a child so i can send you alone as weak as you are and say look at the multitudes that god is sending you to i may not have naira and cobble to give you 
but i commend you to the word of his grace and you feel weak in yourself you say look I, i'm unqualified and the word of god says hold on let me ordain you and the same way you know those days when they had, when they ordained anglican priests many things would happen those days we used to wear cassocks you know you wear the whole regalia from top it must touch the ground clean shoes well polished and all of that and you are so happy and um, they used to call us seminarians even the masquerades didn't flog us are we to guess we had masquerades that sometimes would come up to harass people we used to move in groups the masquerades would run around and dare not come near us because even the masquerade knows a priest from a that means that ordination creates immunity that satan is running helter skelter he comes to a house and sees you clothed with the word it's an ordination and they tell the demon go now i say you you come and go the word of god building fortification so don't be surprised when a thousand falls by your side and ten thousand by your right side it looks so close you are worried god says have you not heard that it shall not come nigh thy dwelling only will you stand and see watch the reward of the wicked ordained to be fruitful john 15 and verse 16 ordained to be fruitful ordained to be fruitful if this is all you get tonight is worth it that you can walk around knowing that this fruitfulness thing i'm not getting it illegitimately or illegally i am ordained so as a man of god you go for a meeting you expect people to be healed you expect people to be delivered you expect that there be an outpouring of the holy spirit you expect revelations and signs and wonders and the moment you stand there and say praise the lord and the demons are flying out and liberating people is a token of your ordination is proof that you came with the word you didn't send yourself sent by the word ordained to be fruitful if i'm a destiny helper to you and then i come and i was supposed to pass you because of the investment of the word upon you it has been ordained to make sure the graces come to you and that word will compel me to want to come and help you and support you thank you Mike. are we together now ordained to be fruitful ordained to be fruitful king of kings lord of lords mm. let your kingdom reign in my life adonai Adon, the Lord, Adonai. Let your kingdom come. It's our prayer. Let your kingdom come. Number two, the second key is the ministry of the Holy Spirit not just the ministry of the spirit the ministry of the holy spirit the second key to being fruitful is engaging the ministry of the holy spirit zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 popular but very powerful zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 then he answered and spake unto me saying this is the word of the lord unto joshua selman saying hallelujah not by might otherwise some of us will not be strong enough nor by power but by not the spirit my spirit saith the lord the spirit of the lord the spirit of the lord that this fruitfulness will not be by might that this ministry exploits will not be by might are we together now by human empowerment not by power he says but by my spirit saith the lord but by my spirit this miracle will not happen by might nor by power the testimonies that many of let, let me tell you this let me tell you this truly speaking and i submit to you if you find your feet here then you must testify it's true 
it's a grace there's nothing to be angry about it's a grace we read there that god is able are we together now look at the gentleman that an angel called him gave him this if he didn't have a job you would think he's lying and he called the name of the place you can go and verify that the word comes and just like somebody wanting to steal from you the word continues to trail you until it surprises you you know how a thief follows you 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 think you are walking alone but a thief is following you to steal your phone this one is following you to make sure you are blessed did you not read in your bible that there are two spirits called goodness and mercy and that they can follow men They can follow you do you know honestly i i pray that you believe what i'm saying and my brothers and my sisters you will sit back and wonder at life and you will become an evangelist by force begging people to stop wasting their time and say look come come there is a fountain of living water the way you are going about it is going to end you in frustration come i have found when you encounter the world when you encounter the spirit you must be a testifier the woman said come see a man i know you are not interested but i'm begging you that's the reaction to a man who becomes marvelously helped by God. You become too grateful. You, the, the compassion burns in you. And you can wake your family members and say, look, let's be tired of this state in this house. There is a way out. The ministry of the Spirit. Isaiah 48 and verse 16. It will always be the word and the spirit come near unto me look up please hear this I have not spoken in secret from the beginning from the time that it was there I am read with me the remaining part one to go and now the Lord God uh -huh, and his spirit had sent me so how were you sent the word and the spirit the lord god and his spirit had sent me the lord god his integrity and the spirit had sent me the lord god and his spirit had sent me to preach the lord god and his spirit has sent me to go and get a job the lord god and his spirit there are testimonies that if you don't believe the word you will think people are lying you will even be angry before the testimony finish and say is it really true the lord god and his spirit not a politician his spirit the last time the lord and his spirit came together that collision brought the recreation of the earth genesis chapter one don't turn there just just hang on here the bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. He says, now the earth was dark and void and formless. And then the spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters. Verse 3, and Elohim said, light be. And the breathing of the spirit and the word ensured that God said it and he saw it. And he didn't just see it. You can see it and see what is bad. He saw it and he said, it is good. The Lord God and his spirit. I have carried this consciousness for many years and i pray i don't know the formula god will use to make this real for you but i truly pray that it happens to you especially for those of us who are in ministry the lord god and his spirit the lord god and his spirit the lord god and his spirit when god goes with you worship team helped us and sang the other time that when he holds your hands everything becomes possible i know we sang it as a song but you must find a way of believing it it is true the lord god and his spirit with god all things with god your music ministry possible with god even the enmity of all people that came from your background and know you and know your family and have kept prophecies in advance because they are so sure you will not rise you will be just like your father and your mother and the lord god and his spirit changing the writings blotting out handwritings rewriting truths the lord and his spirit 
but for his spirit and his word you would fail but the lord and his spirit you were supposed to fail but his rod and his staff comfort you they lift you up the lord god and his spirit has sent me walk in that consciousness i am not sent alone number one is that i am sent two i am not sent alone the arsenals that were sent with me is the word of god and his spirit the holy spirit is powerful and wonderful the lord god and his spirit when the spirit of god came upon a young lady called mary the bible declares that supernaturally she said how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man and he says that the power of the highest ah, the power of the highest a woman who was not qualified to be fruitful but when the power of the highest came upon her she left the rest to that power hers was to believe and say be it unto me the dynamics of how that one happened leave it to the intelligence of the spirit the same way the power of God will overshadow you and you start something that is laughable and by the third month everybody sits in wonder and says what has God done the Lord God and his spirit Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost leave the power part anointed Jesus of Nazareth with a person the Holy Ghost you can't do ministry without the Holy Spirit no. you can't understand the Bible without the Holy Spirit I can tell you this when it comes to understanding scripture there is very little of your creativity and education quite honestly that plays a role you will need the illumination of the spirit are we together Elihu said there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty there is a spirit in man there is a spirit in man without that spirit there is no inspiration there is a spirit in man and the inspiration the breath of the Almighty make it men of understanding you can't just understand no understanding is the holy spirit living out his intelligence through your mind so you sustain capacity that is not fair for humans to have the same way a spirit possesses a man and begins to live out its characteristics through the faculty of that man god is able to come upon you as the spirit of understanding and open up your fortitude to comprehend in an unusual degree and an unusual dimension bible study only aids it but it does not create it this one comes by the spirit is god speaking to us tonight please give us john 16 and verse 12 and 13 and then we'll quickly go to the instructions that the lord will have us I have yet many things to say to you but ye cannot bear them now Jesus is speaking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit now how be it when he the spirit of truth that means I can trust every information that comes from him regardless of what my mind says the spirit of truth is come he will what guide you he will what does it mean to guide to coordinate you to make sure you are within the jurisdiction of truth he is able to coordinate you define boundaries so that you always stand in a position of truth that becomes an advantage the bible says he shall guide you into all truth all truth there is a body of knowledge remember the bible says that we are a chosen nation a royal priesthood a peculiar people are we together now it says we have been called forth to show the praises of him that has called us from darkness into his marvelous light not just light marvelous light an exact body of truth that qualifies you to possess a certain level of dominion within a dispensation is called marvelous light 
and the bible says the holy spirit can guide you can guide you you can read a book on finances you can read a book on leadership you can read a book on all of these things wonderful but when the holy spirit comes he will not just educate you he will guide you guide you guide you we are being guided by the spirit that is the help of god given to us guided the prophetic word came by the guidance of the spirit you can't sit down and just invent a word mm, i think you are saying this no he comes in the fifth month of the sixth year of this and that the word of the lord came like a messenger sent from the throne to you and when it comes you receive it the evidence shows the lord and his spirit has sent me the bible says he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he shall show you things to come he will cause you to be ahead not by predicting by taking you there he will show you the holy spirit does not predict because he is god he will show you this is the next line this is the system of advantage for the next years that come in ministry in life finances etc do you believe all i've been sharing Blessed is she that believes, the Bible says, for unto her, not unto them, unto her, there shall be a performance. The performance is for those who believe. Believe, believe, pistis, conviction, and the action that you take based on that conviction. The ministry of the Spirit and the ministry of the Word. The ministry of the word without the spirit will make you religious. The ministry of the spirit without the word will make you superstitious. It will take the word and the spirit. That's why those who pray and crave for the prophetic without a foundation of the word will many times double into spiritism and witchcraft. That's not backsliding. They are not necessarily fake. But the word of God does not define the coordinates of balance for them. And so you find out that they can dapple into what they themselves don't understand. Just because it's supernatural, they will give the credit to the Holy Spirit. Whereas is, the spirit of a man can be exposed to the influences of multiple spirits. So it's possible for the Holy Spirit to coexist in operation with other spirits. Not necessarily in your spirit man. They can find expression around your faculties and you produce varying outcomes. Mm. So it's important for us to know the word of God cultivates in you the character the understanding of God's modus operandi so that even in the administration of the spirit you are defined by the boundaries that brings balance and edification to the saints it is dangerous that's why you have a lot of people continue to pray pray until they take them in the psychiatric ward the doctors will tell you have you seen many people get to the hospital just praying praying i'm not saying they are bad people but sometimes people have gone to the mountain to pray and return back mad you you can't credit that kind of thing to god they may be well-meaning don't be offended if your loved one has been like that i'm saying that their spirits were so open that space was supposed to be filled with the word but see every time satan sees vacuum he doesn't leave it alone he's obsessed with space if he finds space anywhere space through ignorance space through zeal without knowledge he's a welcome guest invited or not so when you begin to build capacity it's like borrowing vessels and leaving it empty he will quickly come are we together now and then those who continue to study scripture they pride themselves because the knowledge of the word has an intellectual dimension and the intellectual dimension itself is rewardable are we together now as a theologian as an intelligent person when you speak to people who are educated 
your ability to conjure thoughts that make sense it makes sense to civilization it makes sense to to um the 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 the, the context of men so you will think that just because you coordinated yourself well intellectually that means you have delivered according to the spirit no that's why jesus looked at the scribes and the pharisees and says ye are not knowing the scripture they thought it to be an insult because they believed they were better scripturally educated than jesus himself i mean these guys had they had the proofs of the entire torah in their minds they would recite it verbatim and jesus said you are still in error they felt offended don't insult us we are the doctors of the law hopefully sometime this year i will teach you how the sanhedrin council came the sanhedrin council started with moses it was a system of eldership that was created for him to pour his spirit to help him coordinate spiritual activities and all of that error religion the spirit was out of it up until we get to the roman government we still have a sanhedrin council but the spirit left remember there were 70 elders that were called come on now are you not bible students that's where it started from now in the new testament the one who instructed it they have been so organized they don't even know him again who are you we have been in this ritual for decades we inherited it from our fathers and jesus said no wonder no wonder just because a thing is very long does not mean god is there hallelujah this year you must embrace the ministry of the holy spirit the ministry of the holy spirit is not for preachers the ministry of the holy spirit is not for those who want power you know that's the description that we have in church you want power they say go and watch benny him go and watch this go and watch that so that you get power no the holy spirit was given us an advantage the advantage of the believer hallelujah right where you are seated i want you to pray in one minute lord i open myself to your word i'm tired of shadow boxing i truly open up myself to your word the ministry of your word and the ministry of the spirit i open up myself to the ministry of your word let your word culture me let your word train me let your word mentor me Please pray. I commend you to the word. I commend you to the word. I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to give you, is able to give you. I commend you. To the word of his grace it is able to build you up fruitfulness i have ordained you to go and bring forth fruit hallelujah praise the lord now very quickly i want you to listen to some instructions seven of them bishop oyedeko said we walk by common sense we run by principles but we fly by instructions the ones who produce pilots and work in the aviation industry they are called instructors are we together now the humility to constrain yourself to god's instructions every time a prophet came bringing the word of the lord to a person a family he came with instructions and all those who were humble enough to hearken to the instructions saw all kinds of signs and wonders happen to them 
instructions can you pray one minute and say lord give me the heart give me the heart to not argue with your instructions my son he says attend unto my words incline your ears to my sayings he says do not let them depart from your heart they are life to those who find them please pray you are beautiful in all your ways lift your voice and pray you are beautiful in all your ways lord i delight in your instructions i delight in your instructions you are beautiful in all your hallelujah please write this down listen I want you to write it in a way that you will always be able to see don't just squeeze it and congest it somewhere if you need to use a fresh page for it write it down not as a ritual but as a guide God is determined to help us experience fruitfulness and we're starting off by receiving these words from him are we together now the Lord calls Moses to go up the mountain are we together now and while he's up on the mountain many things began to happen and a finger came from heaven is that true and the finger began to write on the rock carve the rock and wrote certain instructions and he said carry that instruction go and give the people that this is what will guide them to be a distinct people yes that is the old covenant the law but the principle is still the same one of the things we receive up the mountain with God is that we allow his finger to write written by God's own hand that these are the precepts remember the grace to walk in them is already supplied so he gives you walk by this there is no blessing in the spirit that does not have conditions attached to them. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and when you read verse 1, it says, It shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and observe all that I command you this day. Then it says that you shall be set up on high above every nation, all other nations, and these blessings will come upon you to overtake you. Then it begins to list them. It shall come to pass. If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe pay attention number one the first divine instruction for us for this year be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress instruction number one be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress be intentional the key word there is intentional don't just leave it up to God to say Lord if you want me to grow you will do it you have to be intentional the same way you are intentional about cooking you take the rigor of going to the market and nothing will stop you not even your hunger you get to the market and patiently search out everywhere till you find the ingredients you go back home time is already gone the meal may take an hour or two but you are intentional about making sure that there is a meal in the pot that's how you must approach your spiritual life we are living listen to me in times where the moment you are careless with your spiritual life you will pay for it you have to be intentional write it down let me just buttress quickly on it place priority on your time with the word place priority on your time in prayers place priority on your time in corporate fellowship 
I say it again place priority still buttressing on point one on your time with the word your time in prayers and your time in corporate fellowship these are spiritual bailout systems these are spiritual strategies to keep us up and doing regardless of the storms and the vicissitudes of life the Lord told me this be intentional many of us have never truly honestly grown in the spirit there are people who truthfully speaking under God never read their Bibles doesn't mean they don't open it they open it only on koinonia just look at it and you are busy you just close it and say I will read it later on it's an attack every time you are neglecting the word remember the example I gave about a body the water is reducing from 70 percent to 30 to 20 until you begin to choke spiritually the word content it's important be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress place priority invest time with the word let me advise many of us here who are working class you have businesses or you have jobs please sit down with God and design a strategy for your spiritual growth you will never have time that you didn't create did you hear what I said you will never have time thank you that you did not create you will have to create and make time anything you don't create time for there is no time for it you eat because you create time for eating you go on a job because you created time for it if you don't create time for God in your life there will not be time for God God is not about to add one minute to 24 hours we're all given that and that's all we have per day you have to create time for some of us it may mean trusting God for grace to flog out the spirit of slumber from your life if your day is obviously occupied then you have to train your spirit man to be awake and invest in the world all of us may not have equal time every day but please trust God for grace to create time create time create time create time oh how I love your Lord they are my meditations all day long let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart embrace the word there was a very popular story of Smith Wigglesworth it was said if you went to his house you would almost be bored because all you will be doing is reading scriptures they will open the Bible you will share then you close it just laugh over and then you say let's do it again and then you open the Bible even in his photo you see him with a small Bible holding it no wonder he was from a cobbler became one of the apostles of faith the Word of God built him up gave him an inheritance if you have salary minus the Word of God you are in trouble if you have more degrees minus the Word of God you are in trouble if you have more influence minus the Word of God you are in trouble twice for even contending for influence minus the Word anything minus the word is not just zero is trouble be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress for some of us you have not yet agreed on a place for prayer with God I mean personal prayer not just Tuesday prayer with prayer band and prayer here in Koinonia you need to go the extra mile some of us have roommates and friends and of course you don't disturb and distract people if you trust God and cry the Holy Spirit you know this the way believers see God now is very disturbing people went out of their ways to found there used to be in the campus those days there's a place many of you don't know it was called Lawn Tennis Court people would come some under the tree some near a chair they just pile a chair and you are passing sometimes you are passing you want to quickly go and ease yourself you hear somebody just praying there in other words don't near here this is me and god but now this obsession for convenience please don't get me wrong 
I'm not saying God wants us to be comfortable. But let me tell you the truth. If it is God you want to do business with, trust God for grace to conquer an excessive appetite for convenience. People used to pray in the rain. Rain, rain falling. They would lie down and say, let it finish on me. And God says, you do this to express your passion. Not because that's the activity that gets God to you. But it's a token of your hunger and desperation. Please find a place to pray. Find a place to pray. There's too much distraction in our world. And don't get me wrong again. I know that I'm talking to a larger body of people. Don't get me wrong. I don't mean to be sarcastic. Manage social media. Are we together? Manage this. Some of us, even if there is nothing, you have to text. You have to check something. Ah, let me check who is there now. Those things can eat up time. Time will continue to pass. Trust God for grace to stay with the word. Shakotos kabakata. Is there any problem while you are praying like this? No. This is the year of extraordinary fruitfulness. The rod of Aaron did not just board. It was kept somewhere. Location mattered. Not anywhere. There was a place it was kept. Samuel was lying down close to the ark when he had the voice of God. Anywhere is not where God meets with people. God is everywhere. But no sensible man meets with anybody just anywhere. You don't hold meeting at a junction where a mechanic is fixing a car and you say, come for a board meeting. No. Atmosphere matters with God. It's true. If there is no place in your house convert your toilet to an atmosphere it's not insulting at least nobody would disturb you when you are there and you cry your heart oh god open my eyes there is one thing i can see that will change my life what is it it's not just to pray and then you just pray and then say amen and you are going god has not responded were you alone you didn't believe he was there they that wait doesn't mean they that fast it means they that lie down there and say lord i'm not going anywhere god honors the fate of waiters i have benefited from waiting it's not every time you are talking and praying download worship tunes like this come and meet the worship team to set something for you like this and all you are doing is just lying down and soaking in that presence and then his word will come he will send one word to you and it will light upon your family and your generation he sent a word to jacob listen we win by the strategies we receive from the spirit there is something i must see to win joshua knew this and he refused to move until the circumcision was done and here comes the captain of the host of God. He came to deliver the strategy. This is what you are going to do. Had the angel not come, Joshua would have been surprised at what Jericho would do for him. You know, the story makes it cheap. Cheap victory is because of the strategy God gave. Not because the matter is not serious. When God comes, he has the ability to deflate every mountain like a balloon. And you say, where is the mountain before Zerubbabel? Please learn to stay, learn to stay, learn to stay. Gentlemen, you want to be established. It's not all about just reading, reading. I must make it, I must huddle. You need to lock yourself and say, Lord, one thing is needful. Open my eyes. What is it? It's painful to run around and merry-go-round and find out you still did not get it. His presence has value. Stay. You're a man of God. Stay. Don't just go around sending text messages. I know you may be well-meaning. Please invite me. You, you've seen me preach the other day with promise. The other day I preached with Pastor Femi. I think you, by now you know I'm a man of God. No. No. Stay. And let there be a walking of the Spirit. It may be for days. It may be for months. But let me tell you, when you truly stay with God and he comes to you, you will be surprised what your life will become. Number two, let's hurry up. Be intentional, second instruction, about building capacity, underlying capacity. 
through proper exposure and useful word-based information i will take it again be intentional about building capacity through proper exposure you can underline the word proper exposure is a double-edged sword proper exposure and useful word-based information there are all kinds of information on the internet that propose success propose a good life there is a maze of ideas swimming all around the internet attempting to profess solution to the various predicaments of men but heaven and earth will pass away the bible says but only his word abides forever whatever information you grant access to your life like a drug it must be vetted on the platform of the word if it does not pass that test my brother and my sister don't waste your time because you will still go through the rigor of taking it out again let it never even get there in the first place capacity second kings chapter 4 and 1 to 6 don't turn there just write it down the challenge of the woman was an issue of capacity not oil the oil had potentials but the vessel was small so the oil reduced to assume the shape of the vessel and the prophet identified it he said i know what is wrong it's not necessarily a need for more oil he says go and borrow vessel he said borrow not a few and she shot herself and the oil continued to pour and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped god blesses us according to his perception of our capacities matthew 25 he gave unto one five talents two talents one not according to his love for them according to their several abilities and in the end i have a teaching on this I will tell you that all the five people were tested because the man with five had the challenge of pride and overconfidence to overcome the fact that he had the highest his challenge at his level would be pride and overconfidence the man at two had the challenge of jealousy and ingratitude to overcome knowing there was someone higher than him he needed to be tested there the guy with one it is clear that it's even messy that brought that one because later on you see that his anger and none of the two spoke about the other person but the last one spoke about the rest in anger god tested them and he was right the end of the story tells us there are people who no amount of praying and fasting will ever increase their talents to three or four god sees that your most profitable spiritual and destiny position is two based on your capacity so it's not just the issue of god lift me capacity is god speaking to us god wants to enlarge our capacity and many times our minds are small the bible says now unto him ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or think ask or think that means your thinking and your asking holds the same value in the spirit you can ask something that your mind tells god don't matter don't bother don't answer again god answers both your prayer and your thinking your mindset also sends prayer requests to the spirit hmm. i can be well-meaning but koinonia may never be able to rise and surpass that mindset hear what the bible says that god is able to do all these things but is limited by the power working in us like tap from water from the dam limited by the channel given to it it can come out as a drop in a bucket whereas it has potentials to fill that bucket in one minute the mighty things that god is able to do is limited by the power that works in us please prophesy to someone seated to you say expand capacity pastors we need to expand capacity men of god businessmen expand your mind there is too much smallness there is too much smallness this is the challenge of africa we are superstitious about everything we are small small businesses small ministry small lives everything small we spiritualize our mediocrity and put together factors that continue to endorse it 
it says kings shall come out of you nations out of you refuse to be small it's not a blessing herein is our father glorified that you bear much fruit you need to expand capacity not to acquire things oh i must buy a new this a new that mm -mm. expand your mind and your mind will bring everything that will fill up that space are we together number three third instruction be determined to live by faith be determined the third instruction from god to us if we truly are going to walk in the experience of extraordinary fruitfulness be determined my brothers and my sisters to live by faith for the sake of reference write this down you don't have to project it romans chapter 1 17 romans 1 17 galatians 3 11 hebrews 10 38 romans 1 17 galatians 3 11 hebrews 10 38 all these scriptures say the just shall live by faith four of them in all in the bible one in the old testament and one of the renditions says the just shall live by his faith in any case the just lives by faith there is an obsession for results and evidence even before we start the vision speaks in the end you must believe god enough are you getting what i'm saying now the bible says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace you have to trust god you have to believe god death and life and let me tell you this it is true that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so if the word of god is not rich in your heart your mouth will continue to speak poisonous things against your destiny there are many of us who our communications continue to minister woes to our lives we always speak of weakness we all speak of this and it's not the issue of confession jerry and let me say this man man is suffering man, don't do that don't do that the bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue proverbs 18 and verse 21 it says they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof death is like a tree life is like a tree your mouth is like the rope you use to fetch them you can eat death you can eat life death and life are in the power of the tongue make up your mind no matter what it is there's no food to eat in the name of jesus it is well i know god is faithful i know god is faithful lord i thank you i know you are making all things new ah your mother is sick are you aware she's been sick since last week in the name of jesus the word of god is working in my family let me tell you carnal people will insult you and say all these church people and this your god gave us brain be careful people's brains have sent them to their graves he's been sending people for a long time let the redeemed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so huh. and so you speak the righteousness that is by faith speak it and you declare you lock yourself and you are declaring in one room that there are holes here and there rain falling everywhere in the name of jesus is my year of extraordinary fruitfulness i receive divine ideas lord i thank you all grace working for me and someone just calls you and say i'm about to leave zaria uh is it okay if you stay in my house he says i i, I didn't get you and god says remember all grace pick the key it's yours and you tell somebody say are, are you sure that that's all that happened all grace all grace all grace believe god oh i may not have money in my pocket but in the name of jesus i'm receiving remember I'm teaching the true riches god is putting something in my life that will draw resources gentiles ministry looks like it's rising and falling and you stand and speak in the name of jesus christ christ is being exalted he draws all men by himself i receive the strategies i receive wisdom i have access to his will to wisdom to spiritual understanding i am fruitful the church is fruitful let's minimize the time we spend programming woes to our destiny 
convert it to times where you speak and create realities are we together beware of naysayers our society is full of naysayers they will always laugh you over you finish koinonia and go back home and they laugh say kai apostle can preach oh ah, ah. see him quoting scripture anyhow i wish it was easy you see those kinds of people may be well-meaning but they will innocently destroy you that's why abraham had to keep some members of his household down because he was about to climb the mountain to do something that was unusual and sometimes people can be too innocent to allow you obey god they can be too innocent to allow the word prevail compassion can be used by satan to stop you he can manipulate the compassion of men around you you want to fast and they say ah bah you are overdoing it even me i'm touched by your hunger and you say really and then you stop whereas the last fast was when god would have come live by faith number four this is a serious one now the fourth word of the lord to us all strive by the spirit i don't know if strife is a good word if it's not find a word that is most appropriate for you strive by the spirit to be exceptional in character and lifestyle write it down please the fourth instruction to us from god if we are going to experience extraordinary fruitfulness strive by the spirit that's why i wrote by the spirit to be exceptional on the line exceptional in character and lifestyle I wrote some things here defeat behavioral limitations defeat the grip of past failures defeat the limiting grip of culture and background on your character defeat behavioral limitations defeat the grip of past failures all of these things are like claws that hold on to you and will never allow you strive to the place of destiny as ordained by God. Defeat the limiting grip of culture and background on your character. Strive by the Spirit to be exceptional in character and in lifestyle. That's number four make up your mind that this year and then as always that in the name of jesus by the spirit you will be flawless in character in lifestyle in communication that your words will minister life that you will be you will be flawless your life will be at a true living epistle say amen, amen. there are two bibles you always carry the first is the one in your house the second is you you will always carry two Bibles you carry this and carry yourself too. your life must depict a character that is worthy of emulation we don't like this but this is an instruction from God I see the way many of you are looking at me strive by the spirit my brothers and my sisters be exceptional in character we live in a society where character doesn't seem to hold so much value again but the bible says you are the light of the world you are a city set on a hill neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel that in the name of jesus your character will preach to someone to be saved are we together now if the only way to evangelize is to verbalize it then something is wrong the flawlessness of your character can make somebody say let me follow your god and if you believe that with me say amen, amen. let me just interject here be careful what society calls normal be careful what society calls normal be careful what society calls normal you must have flawless character you know 
in all fairness i look at some of our younger ones right now and i am surprised at the level of lawlessness disrespect dishonor and there is a programming by babylon are we together now yes i was talking to my my boys this this evening and i was teaching them i said look guys if you continue to grow like this you will be great people one day god will trust you with your own ministries and all of that you may look weak but keep striving and i was challenging them because uh, permit me to use the word their generation of young men are very proud and arrogant if they can kick you and match your feet they say i match you somebody fell in my meeting that qualifies you to be a fellow man of god there is a lot of pride listen let me tell you the moment acknowledging grace becomes a problem for you is a sign that your life is under attack lot of pride lot of pride many of us don't respect elders again i was teaching i think i was having a meeting with the worship team or so and then i told them something and i want to challenge you to have it is the power of creeds creed c-r-e-e-d a creed is a representation of your conviction in a format that is easy to become a stronghold in your mind we were trained as children with creeds the national pledge is a creed many christian schools had creeds some of you remember now a creed is not a tradition if done well it is a system of internalizing a conviction I was trained in the Anglican seminary and we had what we call the Apostles' Creed. These are creeds that is like a statement of your conviction. These things are not there again. Till today, great corporations in the world have creeds. When they have their board meetings, they, they chant it. Sometimes it's almost like it's magical. This is what we stand for. This is, this is that. To deliver quality products in an efficient way in, you know, the most available time. You see mature people, millionaires with their ties, becoming like children. Creeds are powerful. You must have a creed that defines your life. Who are you? You must have a creed that defines your family. You must have a creed that defines your business. You must have a creed that defines your ministry. It doesn't have to be for public consumption. Who are you? What is the worship team? Who are you? What do you stand for? What do you deliver to Koinonia? Creeds are powerful. We have lost this ancient mystery. And many people do not know what they live for and stand for again. You call a pastor and say, what do you do? You say, I'm preaching the gospel. You say, what does that mean? You say, don't, don't just, I, I, I'm, I'm preaching the gospel. No. Creed. Let's hurry up. That's number five, right? Make up your mind to be responsible. Write it down. I pray in the name of Jesus that the grace that follows this word will fall on as many who need to get this this year. Make up your mind that this year I will be responsible. The word responsible comes from the word responsive. Respond. Are we together now? Don't be inactive. Don't act like the situation does not demand your attention. Our society is, is brewing a group of very, very sadly irresponsible people on all fronts. To be responsible means to have a sense of obligation. To have a sense of obligation towards life, towards your family, towards your destiny. A sense of obligation. To be responsible means to be duty bound you have to be duty bound don't allow the things that are your responsibilities and act as if it does not matter no you're a family man this is the year to be responsible over your family spiritually financially intellectually to coordinate the activities within the family to reflect christ you are a businessman, you are a, you are a ministry, you are a career person, be responsible. 
and this goes as as an added encouragement to our brothers let's trust god for grace to be responsible responsive responsive someone will have to get up and be interested in making things happen don't say they will do it no be the day that will do it i know god will send somebody to help me god has been helping us like that the rent will expire by october but i know whatever it is at least between now and april i know that rent will come Abba, is it not god that sits in heaven and you sit down and stroll yourself until the time reaches and then you turn around and find out that you are bankrupt and it weighs you down be responsible be responsible be responsible over your life be responsible don't just be roaming around town anytime in the morning in the afternoon you run around you're a man of god you are just kicking stones on the street and holding sugar cane in your hand and just smiling you are not acting responsible if you don't have anything to do outside go back to your house and sit down build your mind are we together you don't leave your house and come back by 1 a.m in the morning with no explanation no apology to anybody open the door for me who are you I'm, I'm back home my friend are you stupid this is whose house no let's be responsible say in the name of jesus, name of jesus. I, receive I receive grace to be responsible wash your clothes clean your wardrobe before koinonia don't start looking for what to wear five minutes to koinonia and you find out all the clothes are dirty who did you leave it for to wash you are a young man don't act as if you are already rich you can outsource people to help you but you have not made the investment and 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 the impact that can allow people to come and wash for you so you bend down and wash if your clothes are dirty by 1 a.m get up and wash i wash everything you see a young man you are a young man and there are piles of clothes you are a young lady there are piles of plates you are not responsible did you hear what i said you are not responsible if you do that you have to settle down and be serious if you set a task discipline yourself to do it punish yourself in righteousness when you carelessly miss out on your tasks don't sit down just forgive yourself anyhow you were supposed to read a book i said it doesn't matter no you will not go far this is the price for the crown that you so desire and so admire god is not a magician he doesn't make charms there is a pathway number six quickly two more and we're done this is a very serious one and i want you to listen to it when god brought this i prayed this even for my own self even before writing it resist the pressure of pride competition and vain glory very serious one resist the pressure this is the sixth instruction resist the pressure of pride competition and vainglory proverbs chapter 16 please and verse 18 let me tell you something in my little life i i am yet to know the one thing that destroys faster than pride please we must trust god you know why i'm saying this because we are going to see results that will dumbfound us this year and chances are that when those results come our hearts can be haughty and can be lifted proverbs 16 18 pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall when satan wants to throw you he sends pride he sends a haughty spirit you must resist it society can massage you into pride do you know what pride is coming to a position where you fail to see like vashti that you are all you are because of god vashti never apologized to the king even when she embarrassed him the bible has no record of vashti coming to say king i'm sorry no there was no record even when vashti was banished you see a relationship between Vashti and Mordecai and Haman. It was very clear that the king was weak because he didn't want to banish her. 
and pride goes before a fall let me tell you this i have seen in my little life people rise to the sky and crash down in dishonor with all due respect there are men of god around the world that at one point or the other god helped them marvelously and for some reason their hearts became haughty and now it's almost as if you make reference to their past reject pride is something i have asked god to give me grace to to fight because it's very easy to be proud you know people come here and you see them acknowledging apostle joshua selman this and that thank god for those things but let me tell you pride can kill pride is like an arm robber it can be dangerous it can come into your house like a, an arm bandit and strip you of everything that represents honor in your life are we together let's look at one scripture and we're done proverbs 29 and verse 23 resist the pressure of pride competition and vainglory a man's pride shall do what bring him down but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit what will uphold the, the humble honor there is a relationship between humility and honor god gives you increase and gives you a platform and you say lord i thank you but may it never enter my heart and while men are clapping god says no problem receive the uploads but let them know don't just say lord me and you we know mm -mm. let them know that you are the doer and god says you do this for me step into a new level a new level of increase this humility check is something that i want you to do for the rest of your life not just for this year two points under this embrace true humility as a lifestyle and a value system embrace true humility as a lifestyle and a value system one of the ways that the lord helps me to stay humble is by always giving me visions of the past if for any reason you forget where god brought you from then you are already on your way to destruction the do you know esther almost made the same mistake of vashti that's to tell you that it the the seat itself had tendencies it was not about vashti it was about the inability if mordecai was the bailout for esther otherwise she would have followed the route of vashti it was only a matter of time and mordecai said remember remember madam remember that's how one day god will see you when people are clapping for you you know when people clap for me and send me text messages i receive hundreds of text messages every day and over 80 to 85 percent of them are people from different nations of the world your message has blessed me apostle of the nations apostle of this elijah of our time moses of our time and i know that they are just innocently trying to say you are a great man and we appreciate you and i look at those things and i look at myself in the mirror i said mr man the day you become proud the day you let this enter your head and forget you were once a young boy confused and scattered that god took by his grace and mercy the day you allow the bounties of the palace to make you forget that once upon a time you begged for food that day you disqualify yourself from the flow of grace god truly opposes the proud i have seen this wreck the lives of pastors i've seen this wreck the lives of business people i've seen this wreck the life of people generally there used to be this song um, i will not forget lord your benefits how can i forget i will not forget lord your benefits i will never forget i will not forget let it not be that when you have built houses and you have done this and that you will say my power and the might of my hand has given me these riches he said but thou shall remember it means you can forget 
influence can make you remember God but forget his faithfulness money can make you remember God but forget his faithfulness ah God may I never get there oh I'm asking you in the presence of your people let it not happen to me if it means closing doors close it I rather remain at the level that will keep me useful than to get to a level where you become Ichabod. Oh, you once were anointed. You once were great. A haughty spirit is like pouring oil on steps. The terrible thing with pride is that your fall is seen by all. Pride is so deadly. It supervises your fall and you must touch the ground. Please pray in one minute and curse the spirit of pride. Some of them, this pride has destroyed some of our family members. It has destroyed many people. Pride has a track record of destruction. Shalakato sabrahasidekata. Clot yourselves with humility. Koinonia, this is God's word for us. We're a ministry that God has helped. But be careful. He has made the list among us like David. But be careful. Lest you begin to scorn at other ministries. Let you begin to scorn at other men of God. Scorn at other people's achievements. No, that's not the spirit of the Christ. Humility, oh God, adorn my life. I am truly nothing without you. Never be ashamed to let the world know you are nothing without him. I will never forget Hallelujah Powerful secret Every time you are praying with God Cry that prayer Lord bless me Oh Sam You are an exceptional worshipper In fact Let me tell you how people act In fact All these musicians in Nigeria They are not up to one tenth of you now at first you will resist it consistency is what creates conviction not truth anything consistently repeated to you becomes a conviction including flattery joshua selman sam ah you are this and that and that and that and first sam says now have a glory be to god and later you say it's true it's true alexander the way you are elijah no no glory be to god but it's true Taylor make me Elijah's regalia let me shut down rain and this and God said no the way I love you but I'm consistent to my values and not even my love for you will stop it not every destruction is caused by Satan God himself can bring men down trust God for grace this year Koinonia let this be a trait in us that people don't have to say you attend koinonia just by you chanting tongues that they look at your life and say this person is no this humility we can trace you to this ministry are we together you are a boss in office or you are this clothe yourself with humility towards your workers many bosses act as if they will never leave the job that's why when it's time to retire the members are happy they are praying and the moment the people retire loyalty is not there again let people miss your presence so much they go out of their way to want to see you the reason is because you demonstrate do you know the kind of message that comes when you are great yet humble I have met people with all humility our daddy prof here every time i see our daddy here truly speaking our daddy is one of the inspirations that has kept me humble alongside the leaders of cgc and i say this with all my heart i have learned humility from them genuine truthful humility when people who have gone ahead of you don't see a reason to say anything it should bring you back to your knees 
to say lord help me let the little that god has done and is doing around the world through this ministry not get to us and, and i'm saying this even for the workers be careful because sometimes we can respect those above us but show our pride to those below us you are still proud you are just skillfully proud but you are proud avoid it embrace humility it's a prayer that i pray all the time let no amount of influence let no amount of lifting those of us who are in ministry i do this in the open because it's true but i do it too so that you will learn because the truth is that some of us have not gone far we have not started anything quite honestly but the, the haughtiness of heart will not allow us to humble ourselves and learn music ministers learn this too because music ministers are some of the people who pride can swallow them overnight one song can reach somewhere and everybody becomes very proud and no the moment people are clapping for you turn and join them to clap for the one who without you are nothing take god out of koinonia you would think we have been holding a charm all through because god is the secret i say this in the open what i'm saying will be millions of people around the world will be listening to it i will still say it after 10 years it is i told god something i prayed a prayer and i said oh god it's a prayer i cried to god and he answered i said never show me the full extent of my impact just show me a little and that's enough for me in other words let me never know how far i'm impacting lives do you know why because our human nature when you see the extent of what you are doing sometimes you can sit down and beat your chest and say ah god boy you tried for me so that you will always remain on your knees and say i am nothing without you are you getting what i'm saying please learn this the moment you do this the devil will tell you you are falling your hand but god will say no that's how we climb the ladder we climb the ladder of honor on our knees not our feet number seven be intentional about walking in love that would be the last instruction from the spirit be intentional about walking in love john 13 34 and 35 very powerful scripture john a new commandment i give unto you that ye love one another everybody say one another say it again one another as i have loved you are you seeing that you are it's not only husbands and wives that are given the mandate to love as christ loved the church but even the brethren you are given a standard to love and you are not at liberty to influence that standard god says that you love one another to the degree i have loved you this is true agape as Christ loved the church, so you love one another. First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. We are going to read four verses 11, 14, 16, and 18. First John 3, quickly, please. Is God speaking to us? For this is the message. Listen carefully. So there is a message coming from God now. That we have heard from the beginning. What is the message? that we should love one another i have discovered that in the body of christ we love god a lot but the problem is loving ourselves and many people love god simply because they can't see him the same way you love someone on social media that you have not seen oh you are such a you are such a kind fellow and the person at the other side is having his his brother saying if i have a brother like this may the world perish and you are there saying he's a kind fellow the day you meet and say you are the one mm -mm. <laughs> and this is the message that we heard from the beginning that we should love one another verse next the, the verses i gave you 14 we know listen 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 we know that we have passed from death to life how not because we pray in tongues 
not because we have apostolic and prophetic ministries because we love the brethren he that loveth not his brother abided in death roommates hello workmates hello men of god hello family members hello brethren god is speaking to us god forbid that my mother god forbid that my sister god forbid that my brother i hate this in fact let let him even die sir uh -uh. the bible says he's abiding in death next verse hereby perceive we the love of god uh-huh because he laid down his life now this is the sacrifice dimension of love god is not god is not hiding it from you that your love will in many regards require sacrifice because human beings are human beings that's all we are he says we ought to lay down our lives for who not for a pastor the brethren parents love your children i know they may not be perfect but love them don't curse and make woes uh -uh. children love your parents workers or superiors in office love your subordinates men of god love your members don't use them love them genuinely enough to pay any price under god if need be to serve them hallelujah we ought to lay our lives for the brethren the last verse my little children let us love in word let us not love in word neither in tongue but in deed and in truth i love you genuinely truthfully ask god he will tell you there are pastors who love those who give them seats so if i see you compass if i see you holding an envelope i love you if i see you giving me a lift i love you come darling if i see you coming to stand and hoping i'll give you anything the way i will eye you you see that now no we must love this is the challenge with many ministries the pastors love the rich and hate the poor they love those who give them this and so you turn members into psychophants and those who do not have think there's no place for them whether you're a child of the rich whether you're a child of the poor whether you're a child of whatever the mandate of the shepherd is to love genuinely and truthfully are we together either we are lying about this thing or we are sincere when God sees your heart of love, he will send the sheep to you and says, go, let that man be your pastor. Let that man be the man of God over you. He sustains the kind of love required for the kind of life and background and past you are coming from. Let us love. You cannot claim to love God that you have not seen when your fellow man that you have seen the love is not there let me tell you this i have grown more because of love than because of prayer i have grown more because of love than because of bible study i have learned and last year the holy spirit spoke this to me the hallmark of transformation is love not knowledge except ye see miraculous signs you will not believe Jesus himself said it. Except you see it. There is a demonstration of the hand and the might of God that must rest upon us and rest upon our generation. Why will you write your prayer request if it will not be answered? Why should you travel? I'm aware that some of us have been here. Right? A number of people that I ministered to in Abuja followed me here. There are people who have come from all over. There's a pastor. You're the one who came from Ukraine. From Ukraine. All the way. And for heaven's sake, why will you come and watch a man? Am I a, a comedian? 
This is not an amusement park. Oh, there is a God that sits in heaven. Please hear me. There is a God that sits in heaven that can speak, that can lift, that can turn a man's life around. Shake that unbelief. Shake that unbelief. Get it out of your life and believe that God is able to turn a man's life around. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, he changes me down, I still love my lives and I love. I could earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself. Let me tell you, one of the major things that I know God is going to be doing tonight is healing the sick. There are mysterious diseases that are coming and latching upon people. You see people dying for diseases and sicknesses with no name. It's, it's like headache, but it's not headache. It's like chest pain, but it's not chest pain. It's like asthma. But it's not asthma. It's like a lump, but it's not a lump. It's like a growth, but it's not a growth. Whatever it is, we know it's an oppression of the devil. Please sit down. Let me finish up and then we'll pray. So by the ministry of the anointing, number two. How blessings manifest. The second dimension is by the impartation of wisdom and understanding. The second way that the word becomes flesh is that the Lord by his spirit will impart upon a man the spirit of wisdom and understanding. There are certain results that don't need the supernatural as it were. They just need an awareness of the laws of God and the fortitude to walk in accordance with those principles. There are dimensions that doesn't just need an event. The power of God is coming on two people outside. Two people outside. Please bring them here. Two people outside. I started sensing a very mighty grace. Ah, tonight will be a great night of impartation. Please bring them here. Just listen to the word. The Lord will do a quick work. Two people. I see like rain. The rain of the spirit is about to be drenched. For I spoke a word. Ali Baru Please bring them. The Lord is saying, I'm shifting you, both of you, that you are entering a dimension of the favor of God. This is what I'm seeing. You came here to contact the grace that will bring you into a strange realm of favor. And I declare by the spirit of grace that everything that is not of the Christ over your lives and destinies, this is miracle service. It must bow to the name and the Lordship of Jesus. Shadow you and light up, mountain you and climb up, coming out to me.
and then we'll pray. The third way that the word becomes flesh that possibilities get to you is through the ministry of men. 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 Men are God's conduits. They communicate possibilities. Most of the favor that you need is already in the hands of a man. You need the ministry of men. I don't just mean the prophetic ministry of men. You need the giving ministry of men. You need the lifting ministry of men. You need the endorsing ministry of men. Please tonight, let your expectations be high. God will not disappoint you. The word becomes flesh. The word becomes a testimony. When the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon that situation, the word becomes a testimony. When you are given spiritual illumination, wisdom, understanding, the fortitude to comprehend spiritual things, then the word becomes flesh. When men are introduced in your life, men are carriers of possibilities, not just spiritual possibilities. There are men that have the wealth to give you. There are men that have the endorsement, the leverage, their credibility is an asset. They can bring it upon your life and turn your life Everything that we seek for in this place tonight comes under these three categories. There are matters that only the anointing can solve tonight. There are matters that the quickening of the spirit, providing illumination, will channel you to solve. But there are things that men, 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 given by God. Listen, when the man at Get Beautiful met Peter and John, he didn't say such as in is in heaven. He said such as I have. There are things men have. Please hear me. There are things that men have. And they can give it. There are things that men have. And they can give it. A man can have a car. And give you the key to the car. A man can have. But you see. The things that men have. Real blessings are not physical. When a man gives you anything physical, it's not really a blessing. It's just a donation. Real blessings are spiritual. All the sons of Abraham, he gave them physical gifts. But to Isaac, he gave him the blessing. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are going to do a quick walk tonight. But I trust God to heal the sick. This, 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 there is a grace today to, to damage all kinds of infirmity. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all. Healing all. They that were oppressed of the devil. Tonight... You will lift up that report, that threat that stands before the God of heaven. There are many of us here, I believe, who are in ministry. We may not exactly have needs. Tonight is also a night of impartation. Listen, an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It can be transferred. You can carry something back that you did not come with. You can carry a grace 
that while you were in the car coming, it was not yet in your life. And your results will show what has been introduced in your life. Are we together? Please rise up, lift up your voice in one minute and declare, Lord, I believe. I believe. I'm a believer tonight. Everywhere, outside, inside, pray. The rewarder, the healer, the lifter. I want to pray. Please listen. Listen. Please don't get used to the ritual of what is done here. It is not just a ritual to pray, have people fall under the anointing. Be sensitive to what God is doing everywhere. But be sensitive to what he's doing in you, around you. Be sensitive to the graces you are receiving. Be sensitive to the prophecy that is coming upon you. Be sensitive to the things that are changing. Be sensitive to the mantles that are resting upon you. Be sensitive to what is happening. Be sensitive to the speakings of the Spirit. So I, I don't want you to get used to the, the, the ritual. Oh, you're about to see people in front. No, 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 no. Let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven and he's the lifter of men. Please hear me. You are a visitor here coming. You are welcome. We'll acknowledge you later on. But please, insist that you did not waste your time to come for nothing. Please, I know you have heard and I know you came for an experience. Many of us have inconvenienced ourselves not under the best of conditions to be here. Please don't waste your stay. Let your heart be open to carry something tangible. Hallelujah. Satan is behind many predicaments of our lives. Satan is behind many of the ills that continue to happen. Please let me have your attention because I want to pray now. And the power of God, listen please, as I begin to pray, there are people here, you see, God may not necessarily, don't worry, it's okay, excuse me, that's all right, leave these things please. There are people here who are sincere people, even believers, but your life and destiny is under the strange influence of the operation of darkness. The Bible says many things happen in Mount Zion. And one of it is that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Please, I like you to believe. This is no ordinary prayer. Remember, it is the Spirit and the Bride that is talking. You are only seeing the Bride, but it's the Spirit and the Bride. I'm about to pray, and I want you to please believe. Because everything that does not represent Christ must go today, now. A few weeks ago, I had an encounter and the Holy Spirit told me, you are about to experience a new lifting in your authority in the Spirit. Listen, please. This is the first time I'll be sharing it. And I saw, every time I see it, this is what I see. I see like a badge in the Spirit, a promotion. And that the Lord said, I will put power upon your lips in another dimension. That as you declare, 
you will see it happen. It's, this thing is a grace. It's a grace. It is not every time a man declares with power. There are times that you declare with authority. It's an office. Let me pray. Thank you, Jesus. There is a very serious deliverance that is about to happen. And please, I want you to bring the people in front. I'm seeing yokes. I'm telling you, I'm seeing real bondages. God has anointed this place to be a place of liberty. Right now, I declare by the Spirit of the Christ. And I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above every other name. And except God is not God, any planting that is not of the Christ over your life and your destiny, I speak by the grace of God Almighty that he must let you go. Now, one, two, three, shout Jesus. Jesus. Bring them out. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I command devils, I command spirits, yokes that have tied down the destinies of men. Be gone now by the spirit of the Christ. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. Go now. Release every destiny. 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 I decree and declare. The Bible says even the captives, the lawful captives shall be delivered. Therefore I declare that every legal access upon which the devil is holding on to anyone's destiny. Right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be delivered now. 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 He baratos kalabarata kata. Enketa lakatos kabratasia. I command closed doors be open. Closed doors be open. Right now be open. Closed by the hand of darkness. I declare be open. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Hey. Is showing me chains over people's heads. I decree and declare anyone here under any kind of yoke at the count of three inside, outside, online. I want you to shout that name again. It's not a ritual done out of unbelief. There is force and power in the name. One, two, three. Every orchestration. Go now. Be loose now. Be loose now. In the name of Jesus, be loose. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. The Lord is showing me people who have been at the same level for many years. There is nothing you do in time that moves you forward. 
in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing fire just rising from my limbs. I'm about to pray that prayer. Anyone who has been kept at the same position right now by the anointing of the Spirit, I declare that limitation broken now. Broken now. Help them. Broken now. Broken now. Broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right away, I want to pray against barrenness. I'm sensing the grace. Don't wait till you are married. If there is anyone here by the Spirit of God, by whatever means, your womb has been closed by the authority of heaven. I declare right now, I'm seeing the anointing coming on a number of people, married or unmarried. Let that womb be open now. Be open now. Be open now. I tell you, the anointing of God is coming on people. Whether you are married or not, some of you are standing in for your loved ones. I declare again, womb, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. I command every devil. Ah, I'm seeing such. I'm still seeing people's feet tied. Like a chain around the feet of people. Right now I decree and declare. Every chain. Makatoska barakata holding anyone now in the name of Jesus I break those chains now 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 hallelujah if you have any abdominal pain lay your hands right now lay your hands just on your stomach any kind of abdominal pain doesn't matter whether it's a fibroid doesn't matter whatever just lay your hands here right now in the name that is above all names i decree and declare right now the anointing of the holy ghost is coming upon your stomach area and in the name of jesus let there be a miracle right now let there be a miracle right now I'm seeing a number in the realm of the spirit 21 and the Lord is saying an anointing is coming on those people and that grace is for direction. You are at a point in your life where you are confused. You honestly don't know what to do. But right now I stretch my hands 21. I see it in the realm of the spirit. Right now let the anointing of the spirit bring in direction, ending confusion. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Direction, direction, direction in ministry, direction in business, direction, geographic direction. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for speed. I'm going to continue praying for speed until I see it manifest. Now, please hear me. Because of what happens when I pray for speed, the ushers are limited. Make sure that you protect anyone because people will start running up and down. That grace for speed must find expression. I will continue to pray it until you leave your current level. I stretch my hands by the privilege of God's grace and I declare... I don't know what has caused delay, but the mantle that commands speed right now at the count of three. Koinonia, hear me. One, two, three. Receive speed. 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 In your destiny. Speed. Do in one month what one year could not do. Do in one month 
what five years could not do do in one month in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. We're trying to conserve time. There is a lot to do. Who is Janet? I'm hearing a name, Janet. 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 All those who are in front under the anointing here, I command the devils that have oppressed you. This is the house of God. Right now at the count of three, release them. Release everything you have tied down. One two three go go now every strange spirit go now go now now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty janet i'm hearing a name janet hold on please don't don't be rowdy just relax stand up my dear that lady on green stand up where are you coming from Huh? You are from Kaduna State. Relax. Calm down. I want to pray for you. Listen. God is not just calling names at random. I want to pray for you. You can expect that there will be so many genets. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. One of you as I'm, I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you right now. It's, it's not something you can stand. The power of God, we're going to have to do a quick work because we want to take out time and minister to the sick. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. There's one of you, the anointing of the Spirit. Let's just walk that instruction first. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare on all of you. I may not have time to prophesy one by one, but every barrier that stands between you and the next level, I declare let it go now I curse it by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the power of God is coming on a lady just where this my brothers are standing bring that person just this row I'm seeing a cloud just right here right now as I'm speaking the anointing of the Spirit is coming on one person there please bring the person is a lady bring her Janet I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ hi this is an instruction God is giving me there is a family I'm seeing the family it's a whole pattern. Nobody marries. No matter what happens. I'm about to pray. The power of God is coming on that one person for the sake of the family. Please, I want you to believe and receive. I declare that marital delay. This is the instruction God is giving me. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. The Lord is opening my eyes. And in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing the map of Benway State. An anointing is coming right now on Benway. God is bringing a miracle. I release my, I stretch my hands and I declare a miracle right now. It's a sign and a wonder how God does it. Benway State. Benway State. Benway State. I cause the workings of darkness over that territory. In the name of Jesus, Maketo Laka Prakatosh, be free in the name of Jesus. The Lord is taking me to a neighboring state. I'm literally seeing myself in Kogi state. And the Lord is saying he's breaking witchcraft. I don't know who are those who are from there, but I stretch my hands. Kogi state, may that anointing come upon anyone associated with that territory that is under the yoke of bondage be free now be free now for this state 
be free now. Be free now. God does these things that men will fear him. My sister, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Something is leaving you. This is what I'm seeing. For you and for your family members. Let that devil never return to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. I'm hearing a name, Agnes. Prophecy takes a lot of time. So we'll just minimize it so that I'm hearing the name Agnes. 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 I'm hearing that name. Please very quickly because I want to take out time and... God is visiting three families at Overflow 2. Overflow 2. The overflow by the roadside. I just saw an anointing. Just like fire. Three families. Three families. By the spirit of the living God. Agnes. Who is Agnes? You are Agnes. You are Agnes. Your sister. No, you are not here for your sister. You are here for yourself. Come. Hey. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, this spirit must let you go. There is a very violent spirit that, that is attempting to take advantage of this lady's life. I declare now by the spirit of God, the covenant and the ordinance that authorizes you in the life of this lady comes under judgment now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that violent devil must let you go now even by the spirit of the there is no hiding place in the name of Jesus there is no hiding place for the unfruitful works of darkness I curse you by the God of heaven and I declare you must let her go alongside everything you have planted in her life in the name of Jesus Christ just hold that there I'm going to hold your hand. It's a strange mystery. I'm going to hold your hand, but the person who will fall is on this road. Bring the person for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare. Just don't worry. Leave the baby. The person who will fall is not this lady. It's on this road, like this. This road right to the back. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare by the Spirit of the living God. That everything that does not name the name of Christ, right now I command it must go. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must go by the grace of God. I set you free, my dear, in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Father, there is... Please don't be embarrassed. We may not prophesy to everyone. But there is a woman here, don't be embarrassed. You just had a miscarriage. Usually I would not ask you to come, but the Lord is asking to come out. Who is that person, please?
there is a Yoruba family that is under a very strange attack. Under a strange attack. I'm praying right now. I don't know where they are, but I'm going to pray for you by the Spirit. Please don't confuse the cases so that I can minister to them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that family. It's a Yoruba family from Kwara State. Yoruba family from Kwara State. I'm seeing it by the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. That family is here or anyone who represents that family. I declare freedom right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, my dear, that everything that is not the planting of the Lord, the hand of God is upon you. And the Lord is saying in the seasons that come, you are going to start having visitations. There is a visitation that God is bringing. And that visitation is preparing you for where he is taking you to. And the Lord is saying that you'll be faithful. In the name of Jesus, I declare it so, even by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you step into that level and that dimension. You are the woman with the miscarriage. You are married. Please don't feel, I hope you are not embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, huh? Because that's the same way you will come here and testify. Listen. God is not going to embarrass you for nothing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. This is one big family and we're intelligent people. We will never come and just embarrass someone like that. If there's anything that looks embarrassing, just know that these things um, are spiritual. My dear, that young lady, go in. Come, lift your hands. God is not done with you yet. Huh? This is, this is, you would have left this girl now. She would have probably just gone like that. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, take what you put in her dream life. Let it live now. Take what you put inside her through the dream. Miscarriage. Please come. Please don't feel embarrassed. This is a family. Did I pray for you? Did I pray for you? It's all right. If I prayed for you, just go back. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go and return with your child according to the time of life. No more miscarriage whatsoever. In the name of Jesus, you will return with child according to the time of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, please place your hand. In the name of Jesus return with child return with child in the name of Jesus there is someone here you are in ministry I've not done the impartation yet but I'm seeing an anointing come on you and this is for your ministry there is a level of expansion that you have been praying for and God is about to answer that prayer I stretch my hands I don't know where that person is but in the name that is above all names may that anointing like a mighty rushing wind in the name of Jesus. There's someone here, God, this night is giving you a ministry to teenagers. An anointing is coming on you. Your ministry will be to teenagers. I don't know where that person is, but Lord, I stretch my hands. Right now, may that man to find the person in the name of Jesus. I bear that ministry by the Spirit. I bear that ministry by the hand of God. Inside here, outside, I declare, in the name of Jesus, let there be a birthday. I draw from the bowels of prophecy, and I declare that ministry is better tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Your sister and you, why is she here? Miscarriage? Are you married? You're sure? In the name of Jesus, place your hand there. I agree with you. Every plague of miscarriage goes now. In the name of Jesus Christ. According to the time of life, return with your child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your sister, where is she? Abuja. Tell her that she was prayed for. And she should respect a miracle. In the name of Jesus, I declare. You're standing in for her, but I declare the power of God is upon you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are four people who are receiving the mantle for prayer and intercession. No, I know that it's, it's, a, it's a grace we will all desire, but there are four exact people. Four exact people, some inside, some outside. Lord, I don't know where they are, but that grace, a dimension of the intercessory ministry, capacity to travail by the Spirit, In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is she here? Come. Where are you from? Kaduna. How long have you been married? Last year. Last year. Madam, you came out here for miscarriage, but what God is dealing with is more than miscarriage, huh? We'll pray for you. Where's your husband? Here, sir. Because I'm seeing him here. Is he here? Yes, sir. Where is he? Husband, please come. Thank you. Is the man here? How are you, my friend? Stand up. God is about to change your life. I don't know you. What do you do, sir? Where? I'm up in Kaduna. Sir. Kaduna, yes. I want to pray for you. Where are you from? I'm from Ojibwe. There is a grace. Please hear me. What, what, where do you work? I work with the Alliance of Africa. There are two things I'm seeing. One, I'm seeing real estate. Number two, I'm seeing distribution. Distribution of things. Go and write them down and pray over them. This is where your money is. This is where the grace of God. If you hear what I'm telling you. You see, sometimes God will not violate your will. You can choose to do anything you do. But because of the openness of your heart, he will give you direction. The Lord is my shepherd, he says, I shall not want. So when God directs you, he will take away want and lack from you. And that's why I said this is more than just the issue of barrenness or whatever it is. Huh? We'll pray for you. And madam, I want to stop the dreams. Dreams. Huh? I have to pray for you. Sometimes you don't share them. But there are dreams that are oppressions. A lot of oppressions. I want to pray for you. This will end in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, this is July, August, September. By October, write it down. Your life will change. Do you know what just entered you? You didn't just fall under the anointing. You see, my, my brother, the realm of the spirit, what is on you is what controls what is around you. Don't worry, I'm going to pray for you. It's the grace for favor that came on you. Amen. And I declare and I prophesy over you by the Spirit of God. These three months, may your life change in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, put your hand in your, on your stomach. According to the time of life, huh? in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm seeing something like a rope being loosed from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. Listen, you will come with your wife and stand here. Look at their faces and remember them. So that the day they come and stand, it's, it's not to glorify a man. It is to show that God, oh, God is still alive. Huh? I lose this in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will return with a strange miracle. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Sir, can I talk to you please? This man. Yes, sir. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna. I don't know you. Is it alright if I pray for you? I want to pray for you. Three things. Number one, I want to pray that sickness will not take you to the grave. Amen. 
I'm not a prophet of doom. This is our, our prophet. I want to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, I want to pray for you that everything that is yours that has not been released, let it come to you. Does it make sense what I'm telling yes, you? Sir. Yes, sir. I will pray for you. This is one of the reasons why you are here. I want to pray. It will surprise you the way God will release all kinds of financial blessings to come to you. And then number three, there is a man from Lagos that God is going to connect you with. God is going to use that man to turn your life around. I don't know what you do, but please, I want you to mark this. But the most important prophecy is sickness. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing that this thing is an attack. It will start one morning. You just stand up and they will say you are behaving as if you are talking to yourself and you are having memory loss. It's of the devil we must pray. Madam, come. God is about to change your life because you are praying and you are saying God should tell me to speak to you. Is that true? Yes, sir. Stand here. I'm, I'm standing here and I'm hearing your prayer. Yes, sir. And you are saying the Lord should, that should visit yes, you that you did not come from far for yes, nothing. Sir. Where did you come from? The other side. Come. Where are the other two people? We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Sir, I congratulate you in the name of Jesus because your life will change in a very remarkable way. Madam, I want to pray for you. Look at me. Stand up, my friend. Why by the life here? Who is sick? <laughs> Madam, I want to pray for you. Yes, you see, ba, when prophecy is used well, I'm seeing this woman, your right breast. Huh? If I don't pray for you, yeah. you're going to start having what looks like a growth. <laughs> and it will later become cancer. Because I'm looking at this woman. No, don't worry, madam. I'm, don't be afraid. I'm looking at this woman on the bed and just whine. And they say, what is this? What happened to this woman? Madam, you did not leave Adamawa State to come here to waste your time. No. I vowed a vow and prayed a prayer that never should there be a time when I will have the opportunity to minister. And the people say, oh, it was just like before. Never, 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 never. That everyone encounter will leave a deposit of God in your life. Hallelujah. Sir, I want to pray for you. He's, where is he coming from? Adam Awatu. I need to pray. There is bad luck in your life. Come, you are a very nice man, but please stand up. Please stand up. I, don't cry. Oh, yeah. oh dear. You see, but let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people are carrying pain. Oh. You just see people laugh and praise the Lord. That, that is a dance of faith. It's just a, a joy of faith because I'm looking at this man. You will not believe what this man has gone through. Is that true? What do you do, sir? I'm a laundry. Washing with his hand. Yes. This is what I'm saying. This man, Kai, oh dear. This man is supposed to be connected to a politician in Adamawa State. This is this man's destiny based on what the Lord is showing me. His name is Zakaria. His name is Zakaria. Yes, he's presenting Michigan Madagascar. This is what I'm telling you. Just listen. Let me prophesy to you. I'm seeing that this man's destiny is supposed to be with a member and yet he's doing, now I'm not saying laundry is an insult, but the way he's doing it, this is not a blessing. Um, I don't know what happened. We had a good relationship and just of a sudden. He changed. He changed. No, he did not change. Somebody told him huh, that they can use you to kill him. And that he has, it's not only you, 
I'm not a pro don't go around fighting anybody, huh? That this man one day will kill him. They were saying, Honorable Kayankali, be careful. Don't allow people to just come around you like that who already know you because the enemy within is outside. That's why he lost relationship with you and cut everything away. You see, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God reveals this thing to tell you this world we live in is not a playground. If you don't sustain spiritual intelligence, look at how may your enemies not get to the gates before you. That the counsel of Ahitophel can turn a man's destiny and this man it's not that he's using a laundry to washing clothes like it like an animal sir you have come here for god to change your life and i'm praying for you by the god of heaven the one who put this miracle service together let things change now by the power of the holy ghost i declare favor upon your life let things turn around in the name of jesus christ mama what do you want god to do for you English house, I speak anyone. <laughs> the bad visitation in every area of my family. I will pray for I you. I want male children. <laughs> oh, healing. You have female children. I have two. And you but want I a male. Allergies. Yes, I need male children. <laughs> I want one. God should change me. That's what, uh, there's a reason why I shifted the mic. I don't want you to say what you're about to say loud, huh? Because... One day your husband will be changed and he will hear this, this miracle service message. It's true. I want to pray for you. You see, please let me advise us. It's God that gives children. And, and I don't mean to insult anyone, but please, let's be careful. This issue of give me male children, give me female children, otherwise you are not this. I mean, it's even better to come to a man of God to pray for you than to antagonize your wife or husband there is a culture of the kingdom listen when we get born again the values the value system of the kingdom the spirit life must be at work in us in as much as i know sincerely that it is beneficial to have children male and female when our people are getting married i pray for them that god will give them children male and female but you cannot antagonize your wife or your husband and say give me male children, female children. Of course, I understand I'm, I'm an African because of issues of inheritance and other things, but we have to be careful. Whatever God has not given you, you cannot have it. And if you go to the devil to have it, let me tell you, the consequence will be waiting for you. Are we together? Madam, look at me. Do you believe if I pray for you, yes, you will come here with a male child? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I told you. Madam, what did you see me doing for you in a dream? Sir, you declare he lives upon my life and you say it is done. Listen, number one, number one, yes, God is bringing favor to your life. Yes. Number two, you will stand on this very altar with a male yes. child. Yes. I want you to believe it. Yes. You believe that? Yes. Hold my hands. Father, please turn the life of this woman. In the name of Jesus, let it please you to open her womb and give her a male child. And we agree, we receive that your husband is born again. And he's walking in the ways of God. In the name of Jesus. Madam, the Lord is going to connect you with some, a woman from Maiduguri. Where are you from? I'm from Adama. We have together. She's my okay, sister. I'm going to pray for you. A, a woman, she does textile and clothing. Kaya cloth. This woman will bless you in a way that it will look like it's a charm. Yeah. Believe what I'm telling you. Father, I decree and declare, surprise these people by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I bless you. God changes your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Mama, that mama with blue, come. Who came from Kano? From where? From Air Force Base. Air Force Base. This is your husband. 
What do you want God to do for him? Don't cry. You know, I preached a message here and I said, God can do it, Abby, madam. Hmm. Since 2005, no child. No messes again. Everything has gone. Madam, stand up. Please, if you are in ministry here, hear me. Reduce your public life. Go back to the secret place and get real power. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Let me repeat it, please. If you are in ministry, I say this, please. Reduce public life. Watching football. Going for marriages that you don't have any business. I'm not saying you should not honor people. But the times that we are living in now, the problems on people is not just sermons. People are in real trouble. We must trust God for grace to stay in the spirit until you get something genuine that can solve people's problems. 2005, how many years is that? 14 years. No child. Her period ceased completely. The devil sat on it. Let me see how you will have a child. Madam, don't cry. It's okay. I don't know you. I've never seen you. You can see. How will you be sitting there and then God will just call you. I want to pray for you. Madam, please hear me. I'm saying it in the open. I didn't say it in your ears. I want you to go and prepare. Huh? I'm seeing... Where is your husband? Anybody who wants to come and destroy your family by giving you something to drink, eh? In the name of Temeko, I, I, I banish them far. You hear what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing a man, I'm not, please, I love the body of Christ, but I'm seeing someone come, supposedly a prophet, but what this man is doing is not prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Six months now. I'm, I'm the only one. Six here. months? Yes. He has gone away. He, he just, he, I, I went to his office to tell him that I'm coming to Zaria today. So he now said, uh, he, he just looked at me. You are not divorced, <laughs> but he has just gone. Sir? He, he just went, but you are not divorced. Uh, he's saying uh, where, they are, where they are drinking this thing, so he just left me. He may not, don't, don't be too quick to judge the man. See, let me tell you this. You see, Ba, when people go through things, be careful. When you are about to cross people and call them evil and call them this, remember that stability is according to the measure of your understanding of who God is. And there are times that even the strong get pushed to the wall. So don't be too quick. We are people of love. Don't come here and start thinking and saying, especially if you know the woman and think the husband is this, mm -mm. We are not here to show who is right or who is wrong. We are here to show that there is a God in heaven. Are we together? Madam, hold my hands. I command this spirit in the name that is above all names to release your womb in the name of Jesus. Madam, I speak to you. First, may God reconcile you back to your husband. Second, you will take in according to the time of life. Your baby will stay and you will return back to the child. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every orchestration that is not of God to keep you barren and to destroy your marriage, I curse it now in Jesus' name. See, anyone here, I'm, I'm praying for the ladies now, then we'll pray for the sick. We have to be fast. But no, you don't have to come out. But you are here, the moment you start a relationship with a guy, he becomes serious and just when he's deciding to do anything marriage it must scatter you continue to enter relationships relationships re loving and unloving loving and unloving today you are in love tomorrow nonsense manufactures itself I'm praying right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit because it's a yoke that must be destroyed
I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, inside and outside, anyone who is under that category, by the God of heaven, let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity. Let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity. see please give this woman her photo that woman under the anointing we have to pray um the lord is asking me we are praying I, I hope i'm not boring you i'm not wasting your time the lord is showing me a family here i may not ask you to come out but in this family you never settle maritally but you will have children no matter how you go around it you find out that you have children out of marriage, out of, and, and it's not like the men will be there to take responsibility and take care of the children. The Lord wants to deliver that family right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. Why is she coming? Why is she coming out? The, the family is. She just came out on her own. No, don't worry. Well, she's, she's, she's crying because of her pain. It's possible she's part of that family. But I'm going to pray. Whether you know it or not. You see, the thing about the anointing, I told you. Sometimes God locates people distinctly just to talk to them, to encourage and build their faith. But it doesn't matter where you are. I want to pray now that, that you cannot get married happily with a ring and settle down and have children but the devil will manipulate that you will continue to have children i pray right now i don't know where they are but in the name of jesus christ we declare that that yoke is destroyed now we declare that that yoke is destroyed now that yoke is destroyed now my dear, look at me. Come. It's your season of laughter. The Lord is saying I should tell you. You see, let me tell you. For all the pain that you've gone through, I want you to hear me. God himself is turning your life around. Because let me remind you, even as he has reminded you that it pays to serve Jesus. Sometimes you will look foolish while you are doing it. Let me encourage someone here. It pays to serve Jesus. It may not look like he will come every day, but the day he comes, he will come with dignity and honor and lift you in a way that whoever has laughed at you will have to bend their head in shame. I'm praying for you. Hold my hands. Father, in Jesus' name, confirm your word. You have said that it's a season of laughter. I call it so and I declare that everything that stands as a blockage to your joy and laughter leaves your way now. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Someone will run out under the anointing. Hold the person and bring the person out. That will be the last prophecy. The power of God is coming on someone. It's not something you can control. By the anointing, you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Please, when that happens, bring the person. I need to speak to the person and then we'll pray for the sick right now. It's a very strange anointing and you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Meanwhile, let this lady come. My dear, hold my hands. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus. I'm rebuking something you don't know anything about. But in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it goes now over by the grace of God. There are two ladies here. Only married men look for you. A, a responsible, godly gentleman will never seem to be interested in you. But when you find a married man, sometimes with children, that's the one that will come to you. I'm praying. I know there may be many people, but these are two people in the name that is above all names. I declare right now, whatever is on you that continues to compel married men, Kaposhkalibra atasubati katia. Garu sekete barato shadekata. 
Shaproske parukapa, embregete shali karuska baruta, emprakato segata. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit now. I curse so, something is burning here. I curse that spirit now. I curse that devil now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be embarrassed, but I see the spirit of lust on this lady. I stretch my hands. Let that devil leave you now. That a man cannot come and pass this lady quietly and successfully. There's something that must continue to draw in the name of Jesus. By the spirit of the living God, I curse that spirit. And I declare it must let you go now. It must release you now. By the God of heaven, I declare be free from that spirit right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for the sick. Our time is gone, but we have to do this very fast. And like I said, please, please listen. All the people who will be praying for you, I just want you to believe. Um, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three. If you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, please not standing for anybody. And aside from those who are prayed for, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, then join the prayer line here. I want to pray for you myself. Just the fruit of the womb. Are we together? Now, of course, all who are here, you can come for your normal prayer. But particularly, if you, are, if you came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, this, this fruit of the womb issue is becoming a serious issue. And we need to deal with it once and for all. Now, we are going to do this fast. All the people ministering to you will do it very, very fast and pray for you. While you are doing that, please, how many of us came with our prayer requests? For those of us who are visitors, there's still room for you. You can quickly pen down your request and wave it. Ushers will be moving around to collect PR. Please help them. And let's just make this very fast and make this snappy. But overflow one, um, overflow two, overflow three, and then the overflow from the building right to second equa and down let's call that overflow four okay okay there is there is overflow two b then there is overflow four please listen this is overflow one this is overflow two there is overflow two b from this place right to the roadside second equa down then there's overflow four just from the gate of overflow three. Then we have overflow three in the main building. And then online. Please make your way. Come out and stand according to those various overflows. There will be people there to minister to you right now. We'll do it very fast. Our time is gone. Please submit your prayer request. I'll be laying hands on all of them here right now. You can just wave them. There will be someone by your side. We apologize for those of you standing because your seats were foiled. You would soon have it back and then be back to your seat. If there are visitors, some of you who are members, clear the way for them. They can sit down temporarily, please. If you are here, you are part of us. You can allow them to sit on your seat pending when their seats will be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
Please rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience. Stretch your hands to these requests. Please, if there are still requests um, that are not here, let's have them here very quickly so that we can pray. Please understand that this is not a ritual. God really answers prayers. There is a God in heaven who is in this service. This is a prophetic representation of our pain, our expectations. There may not be time to speak to everyone. There may not be time to minister to everyone as we would want to. But then I want us to agree right now. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. As I lay my hands upon this request, we're declaring that every request here must be turned into a testimony. Baratos calabrandege baratos kedi. Apratos zadege baratos shalekatos. Ente prata salagato brati kedi. Karusa tapratishia. Stretch your hands and believe. We are declaring God is answering prayers now. Hallelujah. I stand upon with my bare foot on this prayer request and I declare by the Spirit of God. Even as God has instructed me, I declare that every request here by the Spirit of grace, let it be turned into your testimony. That in the name of that is above all names. There are, hold on please. There are people here, this is a death sentence. There are people here, this is an impossible situation. There are people here, God will, the person God will talk to is far. But I pray, what looks impossible, I bow my knees to the God of heaven, the one who honors me when I pray. And I convert every request here to a testimony this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I decree and I declare by the spirit of faith that by this time next month you return here rejoicing. the devil lie to you and say it will be as it has always been. Uh-uh. 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 Every anointing that must be released towards your direction for this prayer to be answered, we release it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every pattern that is not just an individual but is a pattern that is written here as God is visiting you here every other person connected to you whose request you have written here we command a miracle for them where they are in the name of Jesus Christ There are situations here that need the blood. I declare by the mystery of the blood. There are three that bear witness in the heavens. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. In the name of the Lord God of heaven, 
by the mystery of the blood of the eternal covenant we cancel every ordinance that sponsors continuity of this request in the name of Jesus and the king could not sleep in the night and he said bring me the chronicles and he saw there written what Mordecai did whoever must remember you for this request to be granted by the God of heaven we open the book of remembrance tonight any man holding what belongs to you which is the reason why you are writing anything here we put pressure on them to release it now every family here webbed in shame and reproach it looks like there is no dignity the speakings of God does not seem to find expression here I agree with you tonight by the God of heaven please help those under the anointing that by the power of the Holy Ghost shame and reproach ends this night shame and reproach ends this night shame and reproach ends this night Therefore, I decree and declare that these Egyptians you have dropped here, by the God of heaven, may you see them no more forever. May you see them no more forever. The same way I stand upon this request, I command that you stand upon every challenge. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak over your life. The doors that have followed you here closed in the name of Jesus please believe let your don't be distracted focus on the Word of God in the name of Jesus I command those doors be open now be open now be open now be open now every grounded ministry here every grounded business every grounded family hear the word of the lord i command and i declare come back to life come back to life come back to life come back to life every helper assigned from god who has not yet paid attention to you and what you request I stand by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus I compel them to attend to your matters I compel them to attend to your matters I compel them to attend to your matters everything that should have happened and has not yet happened according to the program of God you know you should have entered that level and you are not there by prophecy I push you to that level by prophecy I push you to that level listen you see let me tell you what I'm doing I'm not just speaking I'm placing something upon your life you may not see it but you leave this place and watch what happens to you then you will see things turn around let me pray for you the kind of favor that must bring acceleration to your life please receive this one in the name that is above all names may that mantle like a cloak take favor take favor carry favor carry favor in the name of jesus every area you have struggled in your life you have done what you know to do in the name of Jesus I declare that that struggle comes to end now now please listen 
the anointing your destiny needs for this season please listen every season has a grace requirement every season there are doors that don't just open because you stand in front of them yesterday's anointing will not move you to tomorrow's place i pray for you this is an impartation wherever you are i declare like the dew of heaven the kind of grace you must carry for this season let it land on your destiny now by this anointing i forbid you from being ignored in the name of jesus christ i forbid you from being ignored i forbid you from being trivialized no man will look down on you they came to jesus and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him the things that must be done through your hands in this season for it to be said this is the lord's doing as you are lifting your hands may a fresh unction from heaven come upon those hands for exploits anyone in ministry here i declare over you go back to your various assemblies and platforms let there be fire on your altar fire on your altar fire on the ministration let the gifts of the spirit work powerfully in the name of jesus we're rounding up let's pray over our finances this issue of finance is bringing many people to their knees bringing many families to their knees distracting people the time we should spend on the things of the kingdom we are focusing on money what to eat what to wear house rent building projects it is not the will of God in the name of Jesus Christ Ebenezer the helper of men I declare this month even beginning from today receive strange financial help receive strange financial help in the name of Jesus I prophesy to you strange financial help everyone under the sound of my voice trusting God for an honorable job listen there are jobs that don't have honor they are time wasters they are devourers i pray for you the kind of job that represents dignity that will honor you and help you to build your home well may the god of heaven give you such a job let me pray for your spiritual life if you have cars you have houses and your spiritual life is not on fire you are not doing well the first index to measure prosperity in the kingdom is the health of your spiritual life that your prayer life fire word life fire fellowship with the spirit fire no room for up today down tomorrow i pray for you fresh fire upon your prayer life 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 every lukewarmness slumber gluttony these spirits that destroy your spiritual fervency i declare in the name of jesus receive victory over them the grace that can keep a man in the presence of god the, the staying power that you can stay with the world stay in prayer not rushing and rush out and one power god is not a magician i pray for you the unction to stay receive it in the name of jesus every dimension in the spirit 
that is supposed to have been activated. There are some of you now, listen, there are levels of graces you should have left. Sincerely, there are dimensions of power. There are haziness, certain dimensions of haziness in your spiritual perception. There is a level of authority. There is an office you should be sitting on now, but it's not yet there. I pray for you. The mantle that will shift you to that level, may that grace come upon you now. The mantle that will shift you to that level. May that grace come upon you now. Listen. Everything in your life that has refused to grow. God gave you a ministry that has refused to grow. No membership, nobody is placing a demand on your grace. God gave you a business, it has refused to grow. No increase, no impact. Anything that is alive grows. Whatever has stopped growth in your life, I bring that thing to an end now. Finally, let me pray, please. The spirit of infirmity. I told you that this is, this is, I came to pray and rebuke that spirit. Because that spirit, like the angel of death, is moving over families. Attacking children. Attacking all kinds of people. Headache will just kill a man for nothing. Kata. And they will say it's cancer. Pain around your breast. They will say you have a malignant a tumor see let me tell you whatever you don't fight to victory will remain in your life challenges are not the issue but that you stand and fight the good fight of faith until you see what God said if you have not seen what God said don't stop I pray for you the spirit of a warrior the grace that will cause you to refuse to allow things that are not the will of God. May that grace rest upon you now. As a body of believers, we agree that the spirit of infirmity first over this family, number two over this territory, and number three over the body of Christ. Thou spirit of infirmity, we banish your operation now. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence, the destruction that wasted at noonday, the spirit of death. If there is anyone here that death is looming around the corridors of your life, or your loved ones, or those connected to you spiritually and by bloodline, I declare, let death lose its grip over you now. Receive the last prayer that I pray for you to end this miracle service. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Please listen. Honor is a real grace. You can do everything to bring honor and yet honor will not come. Honor is not about usurping authority over people. There is a real grace. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. The kind of honor that needs to distinguish you for the sake of the kingdom in this season. May that grace and may that honor rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands everywhere and give Jesus praise. Mighty God. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we thank you. By the wave offering we receive. We receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. 
Please let me say this. Let there be no movements till we are done. Every time we are almost done, many of you cancel out everything God has done through disobedience. Just give me two minutes and then we must leave. There are people here who are yet to truly surrender their life. Please keep standing. We believe in soul winning. And in reality, we believe that it is the greatest miracle. There are people here who came to this place confused, looking for Jesus sincerely. Religion refused to give you. Sometimes we men of God disappointed you, but you are still looking for Jesus. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but the way my life is right now, I need help. Now, whatever, whether you are inside, outside, we have two minutes for you. Please, win that war this night. Don't sit down dilly-dallying. You know that you need Jesus. Wherever you are, inside, outside, I don't want you to be ashamed. Aside from overflow 3, overflow 2B, and overflow floor, you can just move to your various projector screens. But you are here, quickly. I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and stand here right now. Quickly. I don't expect you to be thinking about it. Keep standing. It's something you should know. Keep coming. Run to Jesus. Don't let any friend hold your hand and say, don't embarrass yourself. Don't let any relative keep you bound. Our time is gone, but your salvation is important. Keep coming. Keep coming. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. Win that war and come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. If you are not sure, make your way and come quickly. Apostle, I'm a leader in my fellowship. Join them quickly. We have one more minute, please. Those coming from outside, quickly. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those online following from whatever nation, doesn't matter. Once you are following and you can hear my voice, listen to me, please. Believers, listen. It is important that we never lose out on soul winning. Let me say this. It is not just an evangelical agenda. It is not an orthodox agenda. It is not a man of God agenda. It is the only way men come to this kingdom. No matter what we do, please, you're a man of God here, hear me. Don't be careless over soul winning. It is important that people be given an opportunity, except you don't know what salvation is. If you really understand what the new birth is, you will desire even your enemy to be saved. It is the only gateway. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave. Salvation is a giver's gift to you. You receive. I salute all of you who have come here. Some of you are standing here rededicating your lives. Some of you are not even sure what you are doing honestly. Some of you are here genuinely for the first time. It doesn't matter. You see, the thing about the love of God is that the moment you call on his mercy, he will act as though he's not seeing what is wrong with you again. The mercy of God is powerful. Religion is what drives people away from God. Lift your right hand. Those around the various overflows, join them. Please say after me, sincerely, Jesus is in this place. You are not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. This night, I receive Jesus as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that according to Scripture, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I'm not only heaven bound, but I reign in life. I receive of the Holy Spirit. From today, I declare 
and forever that I'm a child of God. Amen. I declare over you by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven. The Lord himself is granting you a new beginning. I pray that you will know the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a new and a fresh way. I pray for you that you will know the anointing in a mighty way. For many of you who are standing here, may God use you to become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with hunger for spiritual things. I bless you with passion for the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. A big congratulations. Now, please, I want all of you alongside um, those at the various overflows. There should be someone waving his or her hands. Please, I'd like you to follow them very quickly. And there will be a group of people who will address you. Let's do that very quickly. Let's do that quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone, but... Um, Please listen, we're about to take the announcements. Welcome the first timers and we're done. I sincerely apologize. Pray for us by God's grace. I know that God will grant us the grace. We'll soon have our place and we'll reschedule our services to allow us finish on time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I, I, know I welcome everybody. We're going to welcome the first timers now. But particularly, I just want to honor a few people first. I want to bless our precious people, the delegates from um, the King's Court and the Oasis. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The redeemed Christian Church of God, that's, um, that's the church that Nathaniel Bassi pastors. God bless you. Thank you. There are a group of people here, adorable people. These people take, they take care of me so much every time we have a meeting around their place and um, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. I want us to honor the pastor from Ukraine. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you very much. And um, now I know there are so many people. Please don't find offense. It's by no way belittling you. Every We believe the law of honor is one of our foundational um, values, our pillars here. I just felt I am indebted to some of the people that are connected to these ones. And so I just wanted to to do that honor. And I think, I hope I'm right. Yes, it should be him. Um, I saw Elisha Maman somewhere. He just squeezed himself. That's him. May God bless you. Very humble and very great man. I love you. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Every other person who has come here, especially for those of you who came from so very far, um, aside from those that I called, within a few minutes I will request that you come um, and stand here so that we will honor you. We believe in honor. And I know that in many churches, they have different ways of receiving people, but we don't fake things and we don't pretend things here. When we call you out to honor you, we really mean it. It's not some Christian stage managed acting, no. Genuinely, sincerely. So wherever you are, aside from the extreme overflows, I would request that you just move to the front of your projector stand. But for those of us who are here, Overflow 1, Overflow 2, please gallantly walk and come right here. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want to honor you. You're that important and we love you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? <laughs> Hallelujah. Please stand. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Let them come while I talk because of time. Keep coming. Let me tell you this. You see, it's all right. Praise God. Just listen to me while they come. It's a lesson that I want to teach all of us. Please learn this. Never take men for granted. When, when God honors you, please hear me, pastors. I tell you why we stop getting members in our churches. Because we get to points where we believe we are too big to honor the people. In other words, they don't mean anything. I always thank God and appreciate every one person who takes the pain to come here. Thank God for the wonderful things that he's doing. But remember that nobody is obliged anywhere to honor you and to promote what you represent. And when you find a people who can make such investments, value them. 
Are we together? Whether you are a pastor, whether you are a businessman, this world is the world of men. Place honor on men. He says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Influence is your blessing when you honor men. Thank you so much, every one of you. I wish I had the time to really walk to you one by one and hug every one of you. And I mean it from the depth of my heart. But on behalf of Jesus Christ himself, the apostle of the church, I welcome you to Koinonia in the name of Jesus. Many of you have heard about the wonderful things that God is doing here. Many of you have partaken of the same. And it's my joy to truly welcome you. You have come from far within and outside this nation. Um, I'm sure that there are people here that cut across all walks of life. Thank you very much. We truly appreciate you. This is our miracle service. Um, we meet here Fridays and special times on Sundays um, when there's a fixed time. But I just want you to know that I love you. We love you as a family of faith. Thank you for taking the time. And um, we want to pray for you. Truly, let me tell you this. You will not have to tell people you came here. The glory and the kind of results you will see in your life will be a testament. Amen. Let's stretch our hands to them and bless them. We love you and we are praying for you. From the depth of our hearts, we are blessing you. Blessing your ministries, blessing your businesses, blessing your career, blessing your family. We want to see the hand of God upon your life. We want to see you loving the Lord like never before. We want to see you growing in the things of God. We want to see you walking in purpose and destiny. We want to see the gates of hell stamped by and through your life. This is why we pray for you. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. The Lord reveal you. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season. It is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain 